Hey there, REM PCs. Welcome to Rules of Cool, where we interview very special guests, creators, gamers, designers, and world builders. I'm your host, Rem, and today I'll be scooting over to a panelist seat while Ava Rogers takes over the interview. She'll be chatting with me, Opti O.C. Presley, Clifton Mr. Johnson Lambert, and Hal Needs a Nickname Nelson about some very big Shadowrun content news. Stay tuned because you won't want to miss it. This week's giveaway is a free Rem Alternus Productions t-shirt, like this one. Type hashtag RemPC in the chat for your free entry to win. Don't forget you can get bonus entries by subscribing and donating bits through the Twitch chat. Every 100 bits gets you a bonus entry and subscribing gets you seven whole bonus entries. We also invite you to join, our, uh, join us on Discord. The Rem Alternus server is an inclusive and supportive community of gamers, and our favorite channels include Pun, Joke, and Mean, Goose Goose Duck Saturday Gaming, and Support and Encouragement for when you just need a little extra kindness. We hold casting calls to join our streams on the Master of Rem Twitch channel, a Learn to Play D&D program, a monthly trivia night, and more. So please check it out at the link in chat, and welcome to the community. If you love all the Shadowrun content we do, check out our Patreon. We're releasing character sheets from the show, videos of character creation sessions, and even sneak peeks at upcoming Shadowrun audiobooks that we're producing for Catalyst Game Labs. Head on over to patreon.com slash remalternus to get in on all the bonus content. Now, time to get right into our conversation for this week, so stay tuned, Rem PCs. Welcome back. So I'm Ava Rogers, as Rem said just a minute ago. Um, and everybody here, I believe, has been on the show before. So we're just going to dive right into it. And I think everybody's been asking, let's start with Rem, what is the big news tonight? Okay, so the big announcement is that Rem Alternus Productions is partnering with the Shadowcasters Network to bring back content, uh, including the Arcology podcast by Mr. Johnson and the Neo Anarchist podcast by Opti. Uh, and this is like really popular Shadowrun content uh, that's been in podcast form for years. Um, and now we're bringing it to the YouTube so that you can see their face holes uh, while you absorb their face holes with your face hole. I should have said that differently, but there we are. <laughs> it's done. It, it's official. Yep. Perfect. Wait, what, what did I agree to? <laughs> Something about ab absorbing face holes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sleep right. deprived. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, for those who don't know, what is the Shadowcasters Network? Uh, Cliff or Opti, either one of you wants to take that? Like, I could give, like, the, the least official answer, but... Um... If Shadowcasters Network was a group of people who formed uh, a Shadowrun focused uh, media conglomerate, uh, no, it's just like five podcasts or something like that. And then we just thought, like, we could do better together than apart. And so we entered into a sort of kinship agreement to support the crap out of each other. And we all just helped each other on all of our podcasts and videos and things like that until we until yeah that's it we still do <laughs> some to some extent but like yeah that's it now cliff can give the better answer uh, i'm not sure if i have a better answer but it's just a uh, yeah a group of uh podcasters and content creators making stuff about Shadowrun and other tabletop games uh we we branched out a fair bit uh on the youtube channel into all sorts of different games and tried some different show ideas but uh it's mostly Shadowrun focused, and that's what we're sort of bringing it back to, uh, for the most part now with uh, with Rem Alternus being involved. Yeah, so um, we're gonna still have kind of the vision behind it is is all Shadowrun and Shadowrun adjacent content will be 
slowly move from our channels to Shadowcasters Network. And then um, Rem Alternus and the twitch.tv slash Master of Rem will be for all other games. So like we have the, the Dresden Files RPG on Mondays and D&D &D and, um, and anything else we feel like throwing in the gaps once we move Shadowrun away. All right, so yeah. the Shadowcasters Network has been pretty quiet recently, I think for the last year, maybe almost two at this point. Do you know, I mean, what happened? Where did everybody go? <laughs> well, uh, I think it's a combination of burnout that was already kicking in before the pandemic hit, and then the pandemic. And uh, yeah, then just some other stuff. We've been getting a... Uh, rather busy with a few other endeavors, such as Frag Unicorns games get, getting launched, and um, I've been doing a lot more RPG writing lately than content creation, other other content creation, um, dealing with mental health issues. <laughs> uh, yeah, burnout was a big part of it. I tried to do a lot of different things. I think part of the problem was he tried to sort of break away from just doing Shadowrun and people weren't very interested in that. And it felt like a very uphill battle. And a lot of us, a lot of the other members and, and us as well, I mean, we we kind of wanted to do a lot more stuff besides just Shadowrun. And uh, I guess trying to put in the work to make that go and having it never really catch uh, was, was a bit frustrating. So it felt like we were putting a lot of work into something that wasn't uh, wasn't going where we wanted it to. Yeah, I That's think. Fair. Yeah, I think uh, when you at, when we started, um, at least when Mr. Johnson um, and and I started the Arcology podcast on Neo Anarchist podcast, like they went, they they ca caught on like way bigger than I think we thought they would, like right right away, and so we had this sort of. <laughs> this sort of uh, weird parabolic idea of like what we were capable of and like what we're what what our audience was like and so um we we had a lot of success and every time we did anything Shadowrun related and then we thought well like cool let's do something else and then it just sort of like as the further we got away from Shadowrun oriented stuff like it was just it wasn't like people hated it it just was like our audience was very Shadowrun focused and they like Shadowrun which is great and fine um, but we also had other things. But then a couple of our folks, um, like Damien and Oz and Bobby, um, they sort of have moved on to other things that were consuming their time and that they didn't have a cycle that was coming back to Shadowrun, where Cliff and I never stopped doing Shadowrun stuff at all. You know, I mean, we were just sort of doing other things as well. But they sort of spun off into their own orbit. Like Bobby's got like this cool science podcast that's like, you know, doing really, really well. And, uh, you know, Oz is on a cruise ship, you know, <laughs> dancing and singing and stuff like that. And Damien's got um, uh, a, uh, what do you call those things? The audio, audio drama. Audio dramas. Yeah. Um, and he's got like a number of audio dramas under his belt. And he's like really, really made inroads into into that scene. Um, and then Cliff and I are, are Mr. Johnson and I are, are basically just like, hey, Shadowrun's still something that we love. Let's just keep doing Shadowrun <laughs> stuff. So if, if they weren't, you know, and, and that's that's sort of it. Like the Shadowrun, Shadowrun, the, the Shadowcasters Network um, just sort of fizzled out as a as a brand. Um, but the, we all we all remained friends, and that's like we still remain friends, and we still like you know have our Shadow Shadowcasters Network chat you know, on the side here on, on Facebook, but. Um, yeah, I think the Shadowrun focused stuff is where it started and where it was strongest. And that's what we're sort of coming back to. All right. So that kind of goes right into the next question I had is the story behind bringing it back. And I think you just answered that right there is we're bringing it back to Shadowrun. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's more to it than that. Yeah. Well, go on. It, 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 go explain then. Uh, well, it basically breaks down to... Um, to Mr. Johnson and I wanting to keep doing well, again, we we say wanting to keep doing it. Like we've always been doing it. Like we've never stopped doing Shadowrun content. Um, but then like, what if we did also like YouTube stuff? Like what would that look like if we did live stuff? And that's something that we have been talking about for years. Um, but then also because of all the things we got going on, we don't really have all the moving pieces to do that ourselves. And so Rem stepped in and it's like, Hey, would you want to do something with Rem? And, 
yeah, that sounds great. And then it's like, how do we do that? Like, well, how do we launch into that? Um, and since Ram Alternus had a lot of Shadowrun oriented content and we were bringing in more Shadowrun oriented content, it just felt like a good move to sort of put all that content in one spot and bring together the sort of production um media aspect of rem with the content stuff that cliff and i were i say keep saying cliff i guess that's because that's your name anyway you uh, say cliff, that's fine. <laughs> right? cliff and i were you know kept bringing into um yeah so that's that's it we were already doing it we just we had all of the content that we wanted to do but we just didn't have the tech and the sort of reach uh that rem has so that worked out really well, well. and i think like shadow casters itself on especially on youtube and and in discord and stuff like that uh, I mean, your your podcasts are super popular. So, um, like, I think you did have some of that reach. It was more of kind of what you talked about with it. From my perspective, it was more of what you talked about with uh, like trying to manage all the moving plates and and the the moving parts. Where it's like, I just want to make my my, my Shadowrun podcast and I want to do it on stream. Um, and so it was like, hey, Rem, can you do all that? Like stuff we don't like behind the scenes for us and just make this happen and so like having like the producer hat on you know where like you could be the content you could be the talent you could be the writers and you could do what you love but having that piece where you're supported um in terms of what your needs are for the platform uh i think that's where we kind of fit in it's not the first time that rem uh and we have partnered with rem to do the stuff that we don't want to do <laughs> <laughs> i just i just get to hang out with cool and talented people so i'm for it <laughs> so where does hal fit in all this that's a very good question <laughs> uh i am uh gonna be doing the producing uh for uh getting these uh content out out into youtubes and uh out out there on all the platforms we want to chase after uh mainly what i well, the way i understand it i'm going to be uh taking some uh some stuff off of rem's plate so that <laughs> it's uh as as the uh, uh, rem alternus is growing uh there's more and more pies to have fingers in and she only had only have so many fingers so uh, and in fact yeah <laughs> so, so I, I will be stepping in and doing a little bit of what you're doing for them right now so that you can uh not go crazy yeah i i pretty much dove into pre-production because i wanted to get this done we we had uh cliff and opti approached me about it back in spring um and then we had tried we wanted to roll it out in fall but like with all the conventions and everything and kickstarters and everything else happening it just didn't happen so i was like all right winter we are going to get um shadow casters up and like i, I it was really a passion project of mine in because we have like a, a agenda for what we were going to accomplish in 2022 um but i started streaming like the first time i was on a stream was on the shadow casters network uh playing with cliff and opti and uh i uh was kind of a fangirl a little bit. Uh, so I, uh, you know, it was one of those things where I was like, I want to be one of the shadow casters. And now I had this opportunity to be a shadow caster. Uh, so uh, I, I was just very excited by it. And so I wanted to really make sure that it happened. Um, and so I kind of like took the wheel with pre-production. And now that everything's going to be rolling out, now I can kind of step back and be like, all right, I, I'm, I'm juggling and now I'm going to step out and pass the, the, the juggle balls to you, Hal, um, so that I can focus on the next yep. thing that we attack and do. So Plus, it's very important. Somebody has to remind the the on screen actors to pick their noses before <laughs> the camera goes live. Hal, I know you're not good at doing that, so I'm no, going to be very no. good at doing that. Hal, Hal has been with us since our very first stream in D and D Episodicals One, um, our first regular stream, and. Uh, without fail we we would be told and we're going live don't forget to pick your noses so it's, it's so they're gonna itch. My... they are going to itch and the more you can't pick your nose the more it's gonna itch and like <laughs> we started streaming in like april of what 2019 oh, and it's it was... now 
it was before COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And it's now fall 2000 uh, or winter, I guess, 2022. And every stream I've been on, Hal says, don't forget to pick your noses. It's and it's nice. not just the streams. He did it when we were recording our audio podcast <laughs> for the Alien <laughs> Game. Don't forget to pick your nose. <laughs> Every time. I'm like, this is audio. Nobody's going to see it. <laughs> you can you can hear the flick of... Yeah. Uh... <laughs> well, that's what post-editing is for. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of reminding, like that's actually one of the reasons that I never actually did uh, the live version of the Neo-Anarchist podcast or vidcast is because I just forget about it. And I just needed somebody to just keep reminding me, like, hey, record this today. Hey, record this today. So finally, it just never happened. I said, Sarah, if you can, uh, Rem, if you can just remind me, <laughs> if you can force me to record on these certain dates, then I'll totally do this. <laughs> I, I, I loved that part because we, we did Miss Spent Youth, the, the Kickstarter together. And I guess, I don't know, the way we work together for, for like following up and what needed to get done and stuff like that. Opti's like, yeah. So can you manage me? <laughs> like, <laughs> set a date on my calendar and like say like we are gonna go, uh, we are gonna meet at this time and record. And Opti's doing all of the tech, all of the recording, all the editing. So like I just sit there and work on other things, but it helps Opti just for me to show up and like hold him to it. So I can yeah. I can do that. <laughs> I need accountability. Too many other voices, <laughs> right? Like always screaming. You just need one to go like do this. Like, oh. <laughs> I don't want to let Rem down. I better do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that goes actually pretty smoothly into uh, the next question. We're going to get more into what is the Neo Art. Let me try that again. What is the Neo Anarchist podcast and what's going on with the relaunch of Shadowcasters Network in regards to it? Well, the Neo Armadillo podcast is a. <laughs> the Neo Anarchist podcast is a. It's the longest running Shadowrun uh, podcast focused on uh, in character history of the sixth world. So uh, once when it got started way back in, I think, 2013, um, there was no source like no concise source for Shadowrun history. And as a I was a GM at the time and I wanted my players to have it. So I looked for it, didn't exist and thought, well, I can do this. So I made a little like one episode thing for them and they were like this is great and i was like hey if somebody if they like it maybe somebody else will so that's sort of it started just on a on a lark like that um but yeah it, it's the in characterness of it like really resonated with some people and like i got i got to meet so many really really cool people as a result of just pretending to be this absolute basement dwelling anarchist character uh so much so that i've become that basement dwelling anarchist <laughs> character in real life and uh and i again I, i've made so many cool friends and so i thought what if and because youtube is, is sort of become something it wasn't back then like now people open up youtube and listen to things you know almost more than anything else so we thought what if we added a video component to this um, and it was me, you know, sort of acting out Opti again. And so that's a, it's a, it's a stretch for me in the same way that doing the audio, uh, doing the podcast was back in 2012. So, uh, or 2013. So we're, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited to sort of take this in a new direction and, and add video to it and add all my wild gesticulations and crazy ranting and ravings and things like that, uh, along with some, you know, cool little visuals for people to hang their heads on. Uh, yeah. Shadowrun though, right. History of Shadowrun. In in character, that's what one it is. One of the one of the things I'm excited about, also since I sit in on the recordings now too, is I get overwhelmed with um, neurodivergence here. But I get overwhelmed with having to catch up on something that I didn't start with. Um, and there's a lot of episodes, and they're they're for the most part, especially at the beginning, they're they're pretty short. They're like yeah. five eight minutes, and then they start to grow. Um, but like for me, that was overwhelming to be like, oh, oh God, there's so much to catch up on. And so now with Neo Anarchist podcast, Opti is focusing on going back and restarting. So everything from episode one back in what, 2013, you said, um, is going to start over, but with that video component. Yeah, added. starting so, back in 1999 with the Saratech decision, all the way back to the point of divergence uh, in Shadowrun lore. So, yeah. I yeah. cannot wait to see it. 
<laughs> with 30 years of uh of Shadowrun content uh since the game's been around like that was quite an undertaking opti yeah 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 it's it, uh <laughs> what's cool though is like i have all of this research that i'd already done so i don't think it'll be quite as as many as much time between each episode as maybe it was before because like i said all the all the stuff has been done and then i even had a hand in writing some of the newer stuff so like it i think it'll be kind of fun to revisit some of that stuff and to add some of the other stuff that maybe i didn't get to kind of allude to or foreshadow uh before so yeah it's it's pretty fun and then we have all these outtakes where i curse at myself over and over again for for getting something wrong those are my <laughs> <Some>. favorite parts <laughs> <laughs> right sarah's ne or rem's never heard me cuss quite so much <laughs> when i was recording oh, grumble 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 can't believe i did that stop recording Start recording again yeah he really doesn't like the teleprompter <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. so like yeah and then like the way uh, it's getting into the weeds but like the way that i talk right like is is hard to do when i'm reading the teleprompter and it's moving at a certain speed because i like to pause for like effect and then like you know sometimes he's like speed up and the teleprompter is just it's just awful i hate it I need somebody <laughs> i need i need somebody in addition to rim to just sit there and operate the teleprompter <laughs> just maybe hold up a sheet and just drag it across. <laughs> but yeah i'm learning all kinds of different things you know it's it's again i think uh <laughs> learning about 400 different things uh every year is is a sort of goal of my life and i'm on pace to learn new things such as teleprompters yeah <laughs> and so cliff what about the uh arcology podcast well the arcology podcast is basically the concept behind that is just a podcast about all things shadow run um, i suppose where the neo-anarchist podcast is all about the lore and history of shadow run uh, the arcology is more about uh, inviting people into playing the game. So talking about the different rules, how you go about playing it, tips for GMing it, um, talking about the different uh, books and products that are coming out. And uh, yes, yeah, just essentially a talk show podcast about Shadowrun, um, usually with different uh, specific topics, but um, we also uh, diverged into, you've know, tried out various different um segments like critter corner where we talk about a particular critter and maybe give some uh adventure hook ideas for it and tips for the gm and how to use it tips for the players and how to survive it um we've interviewed uh authors over the course of the of the years and uh idea for uh the youtube show is essentially just do do the arcology podcast live uh but then also record it and put it out in audio podcast form for the people who want to consume it that way uh, but if you want to be there live, uh, there'll be some live interaction as well. And uh, that's an idea that I've had for, for some time. I actually tried it out a little bit back in the older Shadowcaster Network days. Um, but uh, yeah, I never really, never really kept on with it. I don't know why. Um, I think. All right. Uh, well, go ahead. I think it's coming back then. Yeah. And that kind of goes also well into my next question, which I guess is more for Rem or Hal, is uh, you mentioned watching these live. So, well, when and where will those be found? Uh, I'll, I'll handle that one because I've been doing all the coordination. Uh, so it's so Neo Anarchist and I don't know if I've, I think we've mentioned this in one of our meetings, Cliff and Opti. So um, news for you. Uh, on January 7th is going to be the premiere um, it's a Saturday, and so we're going to play the first episode of Neo Anarchist and the first episode of um, the Arcology podcast, and then they're going to switch to every other week. So the following week will be another Neo Anarchist because um, they're pre-recorded, and then um, the following week will be so the fourteenth, seventh will be both shows. The fourteenth will be Neo Anarchist, and the twenty-first um, will be Arcology podcast, and they'll alternate from there. Um, That's cool. Yeah. And Opti, even though uh, it's recorded, is still going to do a YouTube premiere. So it's going to, the recording is going to play, but he's going to be live in chat, um, hanging out with people and stuff like that. So. And what you time make, will those be Make dropping? fun of me together. <laughs> uh, what time? Uh, I think we decided on a time since it's in January. I haven't thought that far ahead, um, but I think it was afternoon that you guys were going to do. Wasn't it like two or three o'clock Eastern? That, that sounds right. Something like that. Yeah. 
I guess keep an eye out and we will announce it as we get closer. <laughs> there's, there's, you can watch the YouTube channel. We'll have stuff on there. The um, Shadowcasters Discord, the Rem Alternus Discord, Facebook, all of that kind of stuff will be, will be around and let you know. The uh, uh, Denver and Emerald Glitch are going to be on. SC, and they? and yes, Chicago. that was actually my next question is what <laughs> else will be on the Sh uh, Shadowcasters oh. Network YouTube? I thought that okay, never mind. I thought that was a question. <laughs> there we go. So um I, I can't remember the days. Uh it's in the post that we made, um, because I'm gonna mess them up. But so today is okay, cool. So thanks, thanks to tech behind the scenes. Um, all right, so this week is all about the announcement, and so is next week. Uh mid-December, I can't remember the exact date, uh, but uh -oh. Look at my notes, 13th, that's sounds The 13th right? is a Tuesday, right? Yeah. That's going to be um, Chicago 5th uh, Edition Missions, which we have run uh, three seasons of so far on the twitch.tv slash Master of Rem channel. Uh, all of the old episodes we're going to drop every single week uh, until we're caught up, which will take forever. Uh, and we're also going to, so we're going to drop those in the morning, but then we're also... Um, for quarter one, one of our goals is to move the live stream over to Tuesdays as well, because it plays on Tuesday on our channel. So it would be Tuesday evenings on um, YouTube. So whether you want to catch up and watch the morning ones or you want to watch the live ones in the evening, there will be those for you on Tuesdays. One week later on Wednesdays is going to be Shadowrun Denver, which is sixth edition living campaign um and is broken into like uh some different story arcs and and stuff like that and we're going to have rotating gms as well so um all of the old episodes again uh, will be dropping on weekly on wednesday mornings and then sometime in q1 we will uh move the live streams to youtube for uh the evenings and then the following following week which is over the holidays um we will be launching, um, we'll be dropping the Gen Con TV Emerald Glitch shows, uh, the old shows that you've missed. So right after this is Shadow and Emerald Glitch, if you are new here, hi. Um, but it is our Gen Con TV uh, Shadow and show. And so we're gonna drop the old episodes each week there on, um, on YouTube as well. And that'll be Fridays. Nice, it's a lot of Shadow Run. That's a lot, a lot of Shadowrun. Of Shadowrun. Mm -hmm. We've been approached already too for additional podcasts and um, uh, and some like Shadowrun adjacent type stuff. Um, one of the things Ava and I are working on in Kickstarter land is a Riggers miniatures game that's coming to Kickstarter in Q1. Um, so we might do some like playthroughs of that or sneak that in to some of our live shows uh, coming up as we have Rigger fights and stuff like that. Well, you're segueing into the next question oh. really nicely there, which is what are we going to see anything else other than like Shadowrun on Shadowcasters Network? Like you mentioned, the uh, uh, Riggers game Exit Vector. Um, anything else like that planned? Yeah, before? Shadowrun adjacent to me is pretty much cyberpunk fantasy or some mixture of, of the two. Um, so Opti with Fraggy Unicorns Games has um, Games of the Undercity, which is a minis skirmish game, uh, cyberpunk fantasy that's set in Neo-Babylon. Uh, so maybe we'll have some um, some stuff on that, but I know that we are also gonna be planning maybe maybe Q2, maybe for um, Subversion. Uh, so you wanna talk about Subversion, Opti? <clears throat> I, that's all I want to talk about. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Subversion is um, our cyberpunk fantasy RPG that's coming out. It's uh, set in the uh, dystopia of Neo Babylon. And so the, I mean, if, if you're a fan of Shadowrun, this is not going to feel completely, you know, uh, different. Uh, but the themes are completely different, right? So Shadowrun has um, themes of sort of being overwhelmed by the darkness and just sort of struggling to um to to get by and working for mega corporations well subversion is basically 
uh, themes of community and fighting back and actually making a difference and rebelling and staying true to your values. So Shadowrun's about grinding you down and working for the corpse and subversion is basically saying, no, I'm not going to, you know, here I stand and I'm not going to move um, to everybody around you and building up your community and your community, you know, builds up. So yeah, we're, we're uh, looking to launch on Kickstarter in uh, February, late late February, and so we'll have that game ready to go. Uh, we're already in playtesting, you know, mode, so I think we'll definitely be able to have something ready to go, like an ongoing uh, actual play for Shadowcasters Network. Um, Q2 sounds imminently doable. So yeah, I'm looking forward to bringing that world to everybody as well. Yeah, I can't update then, for subversion personally. <laughs> same. Uh, and 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 again, like we know, we've met so many wonderful creators and people that just like love Shadowrun. Um, and so, whatever we want this to be, we can do more. So again, I've been approached by several people, and I'm open to more because um, all Shadowrun all the time is fine with me. There are worse things in life, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> definitely yeah, I, I got to do some some play testing on exit vector i'm really looking forward to that that's cool. uh, uh it, it's something i've found in a lot of games of shadow run it's hard for the riggers to really shine and uh yeah this this is uh, its own standalone game but it's supposed to be kind of close enough to uh to the role-playing rules that you can bridge them and you could you could even potentially use a game of exit vector to fight out like a, a highway chase. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Got to say chase rules in Shadowrun are a pain in the neck. Trying to run them as a GM is just like, what even is this? I'm just making up rules, throw the dice. We'll see what happens. I, I, I love to, I, I have to sh shout out to, to Hal because the part of the reason that I thought he'd make a great producer is one, he's, he's, been with us from the beginning um and uh for Rem Alternus and he is so ingrained in and passionate about Shadowrun um where like he right he's he's the errata coordinator right errata manager for for Catalyst uh for sixth edition um That's, that could be a bad thing but I, I hopefully it's a good thing it's it's a good thing. It's a necessary thing. Good it's job. A very Al. necessary <laughs> thing. <laughs> like that was such an ordeal. And for someone yeah. to really like take ownership to dig into the weeds and fix the the problems that were there with sixth. Um, much love to Shadowrun, of course, yeah. but it needed to I, happen. And I, yeah, I, I gotta say, I, I I think we did a very good job with the Seattle edition. Uh obviously there's a uh bias there not the opinion but I, I really do i'm really proud of it i really good. think we did a good job and and so hal's uh got credits in in several books um and uh what else what else hal are you i can't remember are you have you been involved with missions uh that's where i started with uh well i started with being a fan like i think everybody um my, my first thing i ever got to do beyond being a fan was uh, uh Danny. Uh, Oliver was the missions developer at the time, and he did an open call. Just anybody who wanted to, any any plebe like me, could uh, submit a writing sample, and uh, I got selected out of out of everybody who uh, who who applied to. Uh, and I got commissioned to write a mission. Uh, my mission was in season ten. Uh, it will. It's not out yet, but the. Uh, Missions official uh, publications are in season 10 now, so it'll be soon. Cool. Neat. And then from there, I got to uh, get more opportunities. And, you know, it's uh, as, as a Shadowrun fan, that's a dream come true. Heck yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's it's something passion. about Shadowrun, right? Like, I mean, like, there's not like a a traveler podcasting network, right? Or like nobody's like, you know, I'm going to do this whole YouTube push based on GURPS, right? Like, I mean, like nothing against Traveler or GURPS, they're great. Like, and they're like old school and like revered, but like Shadowrun seems to take hold of people's minds and in, in, in passions and uh, imaginations in ways that um, a lot of other RPGs don't. So like just super stoked to 
be even a small part of of the community of Shadowrun fans because it's pretty it's pretty awesome community. Yeah, yeah like, definitely. I, I think like everywhere I worked, I I got into Shadowrun when I was in high school back in '89. I think everywhere I've worked, I thought about like if I was a Shadowrunner, how would I break into this place? <laughs> <laughs> I've never yeah. actually done it. Never actually done it, but I thought of it. You did. It. You broke into the Shadowrun erratic by, by getting employed. By getting employed. <laughs> if I were a Shadowrunner, <laughs> how would I become a Shadowrun writer? How, how would I infiltrate the corp? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. So do any of you, I guess this would kind of be I almost all of you, I don't know about Hal's presence, but do you have any advice for other content creators looking to build their following and find a sliver of the success that you've had? I yes. do. A pretty big uh, point, I think, is to have an attitude that you have no competition, only peers. Uh, essentially lift up other people who are doing similar things. Uh, talk about other shows that are going on reach out to them tell them how much you've they've inspired you and uh just sort of spread the love with uh without necessarily worrying about what you're going to get back from it because what you're going to get back from it is uh making friends and uh having more people uh interested in your stuff as well so that's my biggest point of advice is uh no competition only peers yeah, that's definitely worked out for us. You know, every time we do something new, we're like, that's great. I love it. And then we talk about it on our other shows. And uh, I mean, yeah, anyway, I, I, I couldn't agree more. But what I would say is two things. Number one, do what you want to do. Like if something isn't out there that you want out there, you be the one to do it. Because chances are, if you want something out there, then somebody else does too. And you're going to find all those people and they're going to love your stuff. And you've got this built-in community that all loves the same thing. So just find it, whatever it is that you want to do and do it. Because if you love it, somebody else will. And then two is just do it. Like everybody gets caught up at, at some point and it's like, ah, oh, I shouldn't do this. I'm so lame or whatever. Like I'm the lamest dude ever. <laughs> like, you just <laughs> did it, right? So like if you do it, you just just don't let anything stop you. Like even if you suck, like let yourself suck. Just do it because you'll get better. And like the sucky things will be something you look back on and go like, oh, that was so sucky. <laughs> but I stuck in there and now it's just a fraction less sucky, but I'm having a great time. Like just <laughs> whatever it is, don't let you stop it. Just do it. Don't let anything Get stop out of you. your just own way. It. Yeah, the only I'm... thing that stops people from doing it, right? There's a whole bunch of people who have ideas and don't do anything and a whole bunch of people who have ideas and do it. The only thing that's different is that one side did it and the other side didn't. That's it. That's it. I swear to God. That's it. Yeah. I, I was going to say something, basically exactly that. I, I was, I wanted to uh, tell Rem a little story. Uh, you know, I, I got to know you pretty early in your, in your process of standing up master Rem. And my understanding of how you got there was you, you were playing a game of shadow run that you had never heard of and you had a great time. and it, it seemed like right away you knew you had an idea and you just did it. Like Opti said, uh, it's, it's really easy for people to, to listen to the, to the doubts in your mind and say, you know, there's all these reasons why it's not going to work and why I shouldn't do it. And I, I really admire you for being able to overcome that and believing in yourself and just doing it. So, uh, that, kudos to you that means that means a lot Hal. thank you um gosh i could spin off of of everything that you guys have said because i totally agree um but really like and and me not nearly having the success of of any of our streams or content that um that opti and, and cliff have had but in building a community and a company based around this um, how you give me the credit, but it's, it's, I, I'm good at motivating people to get stuff done, um, without being the one that does it all. Uh, you know, our, our tech, yeah. our overlays look as good as they do because of Tom, who's our tech on this show. There's a reason he produces this show. 
Um, it's uplifting other people and and empowering them to do what yeah. they want to do and tell the stories they want to tell. I'm I'm only on one show on our channel and we stream five to six days a week. Um, so like, yeah. the, if if you empower other people and and help them like achieve their goals. And one of, one of the things for, for REM that I've always done, cause we, we operate on a volunteer basis. We don't, you know, make a lot of money yet. So, um, so one of the things that's been important to me is like, what do you do in real life, but what do you want to do for fun? Like, what's a skill? If you don't have the skill, I don't care. I'll still put you in that position because it's something that excites you and you want to learn. Um, so like I have a marketing person that was just really good at graphics and stuff like that and making PowerPoints pretty at work. And now she's, she does all my marketing. Um, she's my lead of my marketing team because she just had the interest in learning a new skill, um, rather than what she was doing for her actual profession. So like, just listen to what other people want instead of just always speaking to what you want to see done. And how do you help each other get there? Um, here's what I can do for you. Like, here, here's what I can do for Opti. I can sit on my Saturdays and do work while he records his stream. Uh, like, what can I do for Cliff? I can get you tech support and a graphic designer to produce the content that you want for Shadowcasters on YouTube. Um, so like, that that's the stuff that like, I, I think everyone, everything that everyone has said is absolutely right, but like, um, empower your, your peers to Mr. Johnson's point, as much as you dive in and, and take the reins yourself. Um, and what, and for what Hal said, what, what qualifies you to do the thing and, and be good at the thing and maybe suck at the thing, like Afi says, but you're doing the thing is nobody else is doing it. Um, this is your thing. This is the thing that excites you. And that's what qualifies you. And especially in the gaming industry, um, it's small enough and big enough that there's plenty of room to just dive in, get your hands dirty and learn from everyone else. Um, yeah, let me let me follow up with that real quick. Sure. Like at a certain point, like when Cliff, uh, when Mr. Johnson and I got into the podcast, there was like just a handful, maybe two, I think at the moment, um, podcasts. And so once we joined, there was like four Shadowrun podcasts. But like pre-pandemic, like about mm, 2019, there was like 20. <laughs> There were so many Shadowrun podcasts. And then like, we just like, well, we'll just keep doing it. Right. And now there's not 20 <laughs> anymore. Like now it all shrunk back down. Right. So the people who stick with it and do whatever it is that you love and just keep doing that thing, you will rise up. And, you know, as everybody else sort of like, you know, comes and goes, if you just stick to it and get better and better and better every time you will succeed in something. <laughs> it may not be ever getting paid. <laughs> you will succeed in, in, in getting your craft better and gaining uh, friends and, and gaining friends along the way, which sounds like a cliche and sounds like I'm making fun, but I'm actually not. It's like the super coolest thing. It's it's such a warm episode that we're having here at the end. <laughs> I kind pets. of want to take Everybody a different pets. <laughs> tact on this one. Uh, I, I I kind of have something to say. I'm not. I don't have any sliver of fame myself at all. Success, nothing like that. Um, aside from working with Rem and, but I was a fan of the Arcology podcast for years. Sorry, Opti. I still haven't listened to the Neo Anarchist. Uh, Nobody's perfect. I got stuck on the arc. I got stuck <laughs> on the actual play. The Arcology actual play is what brought me back to Shadowrun when my home game decided it wasn't for us. And I'm like, what do you mean it's not for us? It's not for you. But I was the only <laughs> one that wanted to continue Shadowrun. They all the way back to Pathfinder. You could leave. <laughs> you um, could find a path. I did. I actually found online communities. <laughs> Ava but, and I would... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I was just saying, as a fan... You talk about you talked about fangirling earlier, Sarah, with uh, Rem, with you and your game with Cliff and Opti. I was the same way. I got to play with a couple members of the Arcology podcast. I think I played with Alex in a game once, who was Tiny and Doc. And then I got to play in another game with Carlton. And then I was invited to join the Arcology Actual Play podcast. So... I let me tell you the first couple games I played with the entire 
group. No, it was the fifth edition. The first one I was invited to was the, which one was that? The Rules Light Shadowrun. Oh, uh, the Ghouls Anarchy. campaign? Yeah. Right. My schedule didn't allow me to be at the recordings for the Arcology podcast at first. Uh, and now I've been... Campaign. It was. And now I've been part of the meet the actual play for I don't even know how long now. Three two years? A year? I think it was early 2020 that you joined that, or maybe it was more like mid-2020. Oh, it had to have been mid because that's when I moved. And so I left that job that kept me from being able to join. But yeah, I mean Priorities. You're yes. So, I mean, I'm just, the people that you listen to these podcasts, even though they're the two, like, biggest Shadowrun podcasts, when you think Shadowrun podcast, it's neo-anarchist, it's arcology, and at least for me, they're just people, and stick around, I mean, don't be afraid to, like, reach out, they're people, and I'm not saying you will be able to get on the show, but, I mean, making friends. Yeah, I, I gotta say, like, uh, it, again, my first streaming experience was with you guys, but then uh, at, at one of the cons this past summer, Opti said that you needed a, a female cast member for Shadowrun Origins, and Ava and I almost, like, threw down <laughs> <laughs> uh, to get on uh, on that show. So I was like, you have Arcology, let me have this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Arcology. That connection with the Arcology and Cliff was actually how I became part of the Rim Alternist community because you were looking for at the beginning yeah. of the when putting together the Dresden stream on Monday nights, they wanted a more less testosterone heavy group. So Cliff reached out to me and was like, My friend Sarah is looking for a female player for this game. And so I now work for Rem full time two years later. And she's doing great at it. <laughs> good luck with your eight kickstarters next quarter i love you yeah. <laughs> uh, I, so we got about 10 minutes left here so why don't we go around the table and where can where can people find you and learn more about you and what's coming next um opti let's go with you first i knew that you were gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> so um <laughs> You can find me in a number of places. Uh, I'm on Facebook and on Twitter at Unicorn Opti or at Frag and Unicorns Games. We also have our Frag and Unicorns um, Discord server. We also have our Shadowrun Community Network Discord server. We also have the Shadowcasters Network <laughs> Discord server. Um, you can find me on Mastodon uh, at Unicorn Opti at chip.enworld.org. Uh, or fragandunicorns.com or email at <laughs> opti at fragandunicorns.com <laughs> or listen to uh, Shadowrun Origins, which is an actual play uh, going through the classic adventures in the golden age of Shadowrun or the Neo Anarchist podcast. I think that's it. <laughs> All right. And Cliff. Well, uh, Opti mentioned most of the other places you can find me, but of course there is the Shadowcasters Network YouTube channel uh, that you'll be seeing me on uh, quite a bit. Uh, there's also quite a bit of content already on there from all the stuff we did back in the day. Um, ArcologyPodcast.com. You can search Arcology Podcast or Shadowrun Podcasts on Podcatchers and find podcasts that I've done. Yeah, that about sums it up. All right, Rem. Uh, you can find me here on Gen Con TV every Thursday uh, for Rules of Cool uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern, followed by Shadowrun Emerald Glitch, uh, which is a six edition actual play on um, at eight o'clock Eastern, um, except once a month when we do a one-shot show, which next week we're gonna do Subversion, which we mm. talked about last uh, a, a few minutes ago. So, um, <laughs> tune in next week but uh in addition to that i'm uh our our twitch channel is twitch.tv slash master of rem uh we are on discord uh again very inclusive server please join uh and hang out with us um i'm on facebook at rem alternus uh at real rem alternus on twitter 
Realm Alternatives Productions on Facebook. It, there, there's lots of places, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Facebook is is the best one for me. So Rem, Rem Alternus on Facebook. Um, also, um, I just real quick, I want to say like, thank you, Opti and Cliff for inspiring. Like, I got into streaming because of you guys. So we're we're here doing this today because uh, I was lucky enough to meet you guys. So thank you. You are very welcome. Yeah. That's and awesome. Thank you for helping to keep us going. Cause I don't <laughs> think we'd I don't think we'd be doing this without you sort of carrying on and getting inspired and doing what you're doing and then sort of turning that inspiration back towards us. I will ride like the close system we've got. Yeah, I will ride your <laughs> coattails anytime. <laughs> <laughs> and ride our coattails until they become your coattails. <laughs> <laughs> we just have a, a, a dual coattailed uh, jacket at some point, I guess. I don't know. Three credits <laughs> in a in a in a coattail. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hal, do you have any social media presence you'd like to point people uh, to? I am a Gen Xer, so not really. <laughs> uh, I I use Facebook. Um, I'm pretty active in the Shadowrunners Union and Six Edition Chummers Facebook groups, so you'll probably see me there if you uh, do that. Uh, in most of the Shadowrun uh, online sphere, I do have a nickname, by the way, Stainless Steel Devil Rat. Everybody knows that now, now that I've said it, or SSDR, as uh, is it's shortened on uh, the SR uh, Shadowrun Missions Online Discord server. Cool. Uh, on the Shadowrun forums as ssdr and uh there's actually i'm gonna throw out a uh a hi there to some new friends i have in uh, rudder net it's a, a six edition like living campaign uh also on discord so check out um uh runner net can i say one more thing because how remind go for you. it that the shadow back in the day the shadow casters network started shatter on missions online I, so I, I thought did. maybe I, I was pretty sure there's a link there, but we haven't talked yeah, about so, it. So I'm not that was my it idea, but uh yeah, Raven uh or uh Matt. I'm not sure what, what name to, to go by. Just say Matt. Matt Lemon. Yeah, Matt Lemon. <laughs> uh, he was really the one who made it work, but yeah. uh Yep. I sort of had that idea. And then I'm like, hey, do you want to help out with this? It's like, sure, as long as I don't end up doing the whole thing. And I was like, yeah. it's not. And then Yeah. And then he did. <laughs> and then it's his now. Yep. But yeah, we, we like we went through and we got Catalyst permission to basically be the online yeah. convention games, right? Like that, you know, yeah, so it's yeah, all, it was a yeah, it's all the uh, living campaign. Shadowrun missions is like the Shadowrun equivalent of D and D's Adventurers League. Yeah, and it's super cool. Like again, uh, the Shadowrun Missions Online is just—I uh, I can't say enough cool stuff about it because Matt does such a great job, and um, that's one of the again one of the other things it's, that yeah, we should have started and then like backed way off, and then Matt has just you know kept it going. So big kudos to Matt. But I did want to say that like Shadowcasters did that, yay! <laughs> <laughs> that's very awesome. Oh, well, I'm we got about five minutes. Inspiring left. people and getting them started. Not yeah. so following through and everything. Myself. We start all the things. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always finish them. We start we them. So you could finish them most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. what, what's everybody's favorite uh, Shadowrun plot uh, plot event that ever happened? Ooh, that's a good question. So I, I'll go first since I answer the question. I, I got to say the Universal Brother, Brotherhood storyline was. Like you saw it coming a mile away and it was so satisfying. It was it was great that you had these super nice, super selfless hippies, and it turned out they're just harvesting people for bug spirits. So spoiler alert from like 20 years ago, but <laughs> my favorite story. Uh I think honestly, there was one mission that Matt Lemon ran for me at uh uh con once. Um that I don't know if it's an official mission or not, uh, but it was, uh, it took place, you go into the Fey realms and I really am fascinated by other planes and stuff like that. And he made it a lot of fun. So I think that was one of my, my favorites. I think my favorites are all ones that I made up and ran for my actual play group. So Fair. One, of my, one of my favorites is one that hasn't really come to light 
so much, but um, it, it never really did in the game. I had to tell my players about it after the fact, but the idea that there are these uh, essentially spider spirits in a meta plane, and they are somewhat ethical bug spirits in that they they have to use the inhabitation power like bug spirits do to manifest in the physical world, but they won't take over someone without permission. And so these uh, spider spirits need some hosts so they can show up and help fight bug spirits. Uh, and they hear about ghouls and the idea of feral ghouls being, you know, people who turn into ghouls, they lost their minds. They're not really people anymore, but they would be good viable hosts for, for, for spider spirits. So through some other agents, they hire some runners to, hey, go find us some feral ghouls that we can use. And what those runners do, these are NPCs, is they capture a few ghouls and then they just kidnap a bunch of homeless people and infect them with the ghoul disease and release the ones that don't turn feral so they can cash in on the ones that do turn feral. Is that how Maverick wound up, uh, grabbed that one time? No, this was later. Okay. That. But yeah. So that sounds like some Shadowrunners. I like that plot uh, a lot. <laughs> some Shadowrunners I've played. I, I yeah, focused so. on the spider bug spirits and, and take taking over ghouls and my entire like fear and adrenaline went like nope nope don't like that don't like that um i have to say uh, uh well you know i'm a sucker i'll just say it i like the harlequin stuff in the first yeah. edition i love the way <laughs> it's, it's classic i love the way that you know I, I I mean I hadn't experienced anything like this in in role playing, and I don't think it's been done super well since. But like the idea of having one adventure that sort of arcs over yeah. with other adventures in between, and like they don't know it, like your players don't know it until like little hints get dropped, and like all of a sudden it's like bam! Like I know it's a little railroady at the end, but like like the payoff was, is so huge. I was so nervous about like portraying Harlequin as the GM in the Shadowrun Origins game. <laughs> then I just had so much fun with it. <laughs> Spoiler alert, we haven't released that episode yet. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Newsflash, it's coming. It's all been building to this. Spoiler alert, we're doing Shadowruns from the classic era of Shadowrun. <laughs> you don't all have right. to Harlequin is one of them. Well, that is time we are out of time really here um it was great great talking with you all i know i know you all consider you friends but i love all together like this is amazing love it we love you, you spend youth fall yep. in love not in line out there on drive through rpg yeah i yes. saw that i saw that congratulations and you all do amazing things for the gaming community and everybody out there should check out subscribe to the shadowcasters network on youtube youtube.com slash shadowcasters network slash c slash at shadowcasters network right the link is in here wrong in my notes uh anyway <laughs> go subscribe and we'll be right back with uh emerald glitch soon good things coming bye <laughs> while we stall for tech All right, everyone, welcome back. Thank you all for joining us for this special event interview. Uh, in the shadows, um, coming up next for Shadowrun Sixth World Emerald Glitch, we've got a special uh, a special event happening. We uh, are having our lovely tech Tom Teslan take the GM seat while Bob takes a runner seat and gets to play for a little bit. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. Coming up next on Shadowrun Sixth World Emerald Glitch. And don't forget that we have the wonderful giveaway of a Ram Alternus Productions t shirt. So don't forget to get your bonus entries and impact the game by donating bits and subs in chat. All funds help us to pay our casting crew and keep producing content. You get a free entry as well by typing hashtag RemPC in the chat. And you can pick up extra t shirts and merch at our Etsy store at remalternuscom Etsy. Uh, so don't forget to check out our uh, Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash master of REM. Uh, but we will see you next week, everyone. Thank you all for joining. Later, REM PCs.
you get to play with us now, which is so exciting. So with channel points, bits, and subscribes, you can give rewards to the player of your choice. So how to do that is, no, not Bob. Channel points, I believe it is 500 points, gets you nerfs, which is plus three to any dice roll to the player of your choice. For a thousand channel points, you can do a point of edge to any player. And for 2,500 channel points, you can do four edge to the player of your choice. Now for bits, for a hundred bits, that's $1. You can do the nerfs for 200 bits, that's $2. You can do the point of edge or for five, 100 bits, that's $5. Get four edge to give to the player of your choice. And finally, again, the subs. If you subscribe, you can give four edge to any player. The earth has changed. War that once was is no more. Cities remain. Reshaped. Races. Reborn. Reality. The earth has changed. She no longer sleeps. She has awakened. Ready to level up your cosplay game? Check out the Geek Forge on Etsy. With a variety of props to give your photos that extra spark, you'll find just what you need. Hold magical fire in the palm of your hand, or take a potion to restore your mana. With a large variety of colors, you can choose your own magical flavor for your cosplay. Bring drama to your photo shoots with these vibrant props and more, all available at the Geek Forge. Are you ready to level up your cosplay?
Oh my. Uh, I'm playing a drummer adept. Uh, who goes by the name CQ. Uh, he's a uh, the drummer in Violet's old band who's come by to, to watch her play tonight. Jonder, I believe it is. Tom. You have no audio, maybe. This is what happens when we don't have a Decker around. It's true, we have a glitch. <laughs> An emerald glitch? <laughs> oh. Okay. How about that, folks? Can you hear me now? Uh, huh. Crap, that was some of the best the best stuff I've come up with uh, on the fly in years. Um, so, yeah, that was that, that was gonna be Oscar worthy. I know. It just it's it's lost on the uh cutting room floor. Uh I'll do my best to replicate it, but everything else is just gonna be a you know uh as Tenacious D said, a tribute. Uh, to what I had just said. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, Violet. Uh, we know who QC is. And he's here uh, with a bandmate of his, Jander. Um, a, uh, a typical uh, rock uh, guitarist. Um, pretty boy elf. Uh, who can uh, dance across the stage. Uh, while at the same time looking fabulous. Uh, and Violet, you've had a little trouble with your band before you go on. Uh, your drummer and guitarist had to leave suddenly uh, because the guitarist went into labor. Is that the tricky, the tricky orc uh, pregnancies? You never know when um, they're going to drop. And uh, so you are down. So you've asked QC and Jander to CQ. CQ. Wow. It's CQ, huh? Okay. Yeah, CQ. All right. Um, <laughs> hang on. Just one second here. Ignore the sounds of the typewriter if they come across, you, you, folks. You know what? We'll go, we'll go QC. Let's roll. <laughs> no, I fixed it. It's, Q, it, it's okay. CQ now. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, and you've asked them to uh, to sit in, so uh, why don't uh, why don't the two of you give me some um, performance roles? Okay. Uh, Warm up. So, so I come out on stage. I'm wearing um, it's the Ace of Cups. So it's this sort of flared shoulder, full length coat, um, and you can tell uh, it's got some extra ventilation in it because you don't normally want to wear an overcoat while you're drumming. No, no. <laughs> but it's part of it's part of CQ's style. Um, Would you call it a distinctive style? Uh, yeah, we'll call it a distinctive style now. Yep. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, Jander, by uh, 
uh, myself, uh, comes out um, wearing, well, it's either a layer of latex or it's incredibly tight pants. Um, and um, this, well, okay, it's got sleeves and a shoulder, and there is fabric that goes down, but it's got so many slits in it that you're honestly not sure if it could still be called a shirt. Um, but he goes out and he starts having, um, it, uh, he seems to be really shred, enjoying himself. It shreds too much for the shirt to hold out. Yes. The sh shred is too much. Yeah. Wow. I wish I had thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Where, where's Rem to hear all these awesome puns? Yeah, I know. Uh, he shred <laughs> yes, he shredded himself out of his shirt. Uh, but anyways, uh, you're having fun, um, Violet. Um, you notice his guitar solo. First off, the, the song doesn't have a guitar solo, but. It's gender, so that's not out of, out of the um. Jander always has a guitar solo. Yeah, he always <laughs> has a guitar solo, and uh, it's going on for a long time. And uh, oh, that's why. Um, you notice Jander uh, apparently is not dancing with a member of the crowd because he's up on stage, but he's. Uh, echoing what a very attractive uh, young woman is doing down on the floor. Uh, basically, they are dancing together with about, you know, 10 feet apart with a layer of troll security separating them. Uh, which... What? You gotta leave room for security. Yes. Um, yep. And you notice that once these two showed up, uh, the uh, security uh, quickly got beefed up a bit. Um, but he's going nuts. Eventually, CQ throws a drumstick at the back of his head. Go ahead and give me an athletics roll, <laughs> Bob. All right. Do that. Okay. It bounces off of him. Uh, <laughs> that one's just a regular drumstick. Yeah. Yes, I figured that was a regular drumstick. <laughs> it it bounces off of him. He he turns he turns around, and gives both of, both of you a smirk, but ends his solo. Um, you guys have a great uh, a great set. Uh, the crowd is uh, amazing. Uh, CQ and Jander right now actually do have a hit. So when it hit the web that they were they were showing up, the place actually filled right up. You also see that uh, once the drum starts up again, I'm drumming one-handed, and I reach out a hand, and the other drumstick flies into my hand. <laughs> and then I just cool. go back to regular drumming. All right. Um... Unless you're doing something special, the uh, the you get to a break um, while you're quickly rehydrating. Uh, you spot that Jander is off on the side talking to that um, that young lady who appears to have made her made her way back to um, to the backstage area, uh, which is you know always a danger with him, uh, but. You go on for the rest of the show. Everything goes good. Um, and you have a lot of fun. Uh, CQ, um, the uh, promoter walks up, uh, or the, the, uh, the, the guy who owns the uh, venue comes up. Can't thank the two of you enough. This is the best crowd we've had in years. Uh, it's going to be, it's, it's great for Violet. It's, it's a pleasure meeting you, uh, oh, Mr. No Quantrell. Any, anything for Violet. <laughs> uh, give me a uh, give me a give me a 
going to say notice, but that's a different um, that's a different system. Give me a perception roll. Perception. Good. Yep. Um, okay. Um, so you're, you know, talking, hanging out, and then after a while, you realize that you haven't seen Jander for a while. The two well, of you uh, have a plane to catch tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and we and we still have a set to finish up, right? We're no, the session the, break, right? No, the, 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 the this is this everything everything's done. So Okay. Uh, I sort of make glad hand the uh, promoter again and I sort of I, I quickly make my way away from the promoter and backstage to uh to fr- try to find Jander. Okay. Uh knock knock on the door to the to his dressing room. Yep. Um, hurry up in there. We got we had a plane to catch. Uh, you knock, and the uh, the door actually opens up. It wasn't latched. Nobody's in there. in there. Uh, nope. No, you're right. You you pause. You hear. You know, you don't smell anything either. So, uh, mm. it place is empty. Um, in fact, it doesn't look like he spent that much time in here after the show. Well, let's see if his uh, if his tag is still functioning. Um, okay, so uh, I'll pull out my com link and and chip into the tag. That uh, I mean, we've we've got to replace that tag about every other week. Yes. Um, yeah, you've. Uh, um. Mm. Yeah, it's still functioning, thankfully. Um, uh, actually, yeah. I'm only, which do you want first? You want the good news? You want the bad news? <laughs> oh, let's go with the bad news. Okay, bad news is that um, bad news is that the tag is currently um, a. Uh, is currently about two kilometers away from you. Oh, I hope that means he's on his way to the airport. Okay, sorry. Then the better news is the that news it, is he's not. He's not. <laughs> it's, it's the opposite direction. Okay. Uh, is there any good news in that? Um, or was the good news that he had his tag on? Well, the good news is that the tag is still on. Um, and the the bio monitor attached to it. Um, he seems fine. Well, that's good news at least. Uh, I'll give him a call. Hmm. Um. Okay. Uh. Okay. You call him. Um. Takes a minute. Uh, it um, the call pops on. Um, pops up in full video from camera from his side. Okay. Um, and then you see. I, you know what? Actually, it's PG, so I'm not going to say what you see. But rapidly, the com link falls and tumbles. Um, to the floor as if somebody dropped it. Hang on, CQ. Um, and then, then it it pops up and you see just his face. I, hey, hey, man, what can, what's what's going on? Why, I, I uh, come on, you know I'm, you, you know what I do after after a show. Yeah, but tonight what we're supposed to be doing after this show is catching a plane. That's tonight. That's tonight. You sure it's not tomorrow night? Bring, bring her with you if you have to. <sighs> okay. I um, Give me a perception roll. Sure. Audio, if it, if it matters. Uh, it does not. Okay. Three hits. Three hits. You 
just hear this uh, um, female voice going, Rag it, bag him. And then, as and just before he turns and says, Hey, what are you see a bag go over? You see a bag go over his head, and then the um, the com link it's um, uh, grabbed by a feminine hand. And then the camera shows um, it spinning. Um, as it, your best guess is it's tossed out a window. Out the window, yeah. Yep. Um, and with the call still going, if that helps. Um, now, give me a straight yeah, edge so roll. Okay. Uh, so edge roll. Uh, let's see here. One hit. Okay. You are not that lucky. You gotten if you gotten a, if you gotten three sixes, um, it would have landed in a way that you could see the tag on the car. Uh, what I do want to catch, however, is uh, as it's flying out the window, I do have uh, select sound filter three. Okay, uh, in my earbuds, so I want to try to filter out as much of like the the car actually not the car i want to get a sense of what the car is mm -hmm. uh, but i want to sort of filter out the air travel and all, and whatever other noises i can to try to get a sense for what the what model of car it is okay that's uh all right uh do you what knowledge skills do you have uh, let's see. So I have that would be appropriate here. Uh, Seattle gangs, Seattle music scene, Seattle area knowledge. Okay. Um, go ahead and uh, go ahead and give me a memory roll. It's going to be a it, you might you might want to use some edge on it because it's going to be a tricky. It's gonna be kind of tricky to to pick up on it. Um, you know what? I will. I'll go ahead and pre edge it. Um, that's all four of my current edge. Uh, but that'll give me. And two more dice. Uh, so just the three hits. Three hits. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. With three hits, um, definitely a high end model. Um, between that and the and the hang time as it's tossed out, uh, you believe SUV. Um, and one of the and uh, a lar a larger one, uh, just also based on the hang time of it when it's tossed out the window. Um, uh, larger and um, yeah, larger, higher quality, uh, just to, based on how quiet the uh, quiet the propulsion is and everything like that. All right. Uh, so I'll pull down a, a recording of, of that conversation. Uh, okay. As I imagine, upon impact, that uh, that comm link goes dead. Yes, it does. Okay. Uh, and then I'll uh, call the promoter, our, our promoter. Hey, uh, thank you. Listen, got some great, you got, you two got some great buzz uh, tonight. Um, I'm playing with Violet, uh, some great bootlegs of uh, you out there. Uh, is there any way we can get him to wear a shirt? Uh, but okay, you guys are on the way to the airport, right? We got a problem. He's of course we do. Of course we do. Um, you know, 
just once, I'd like Jander to call me and tell me we have a problem. That you're off getting soused or getting in trouble. You know, I think you deserve that chance, don't you? Yeah, I guess I'm... Oh, man. I, I, I do my voices in private. Uh, so... <laughs> So, so what, what gets us out of this problem? Is he, uh, did he bust something? I get it. He's been taken, kidnapped. Somebody nabbed him. You know, the. Okay. The, the, the woman he tried to pick up apparently picked him up instead. Okay. Okay. Listen. Um, all right. Um, hang on. Okay. So we, we got to get it back. Um, you know. You can, uh, we're gonna, you're gonna, you, you, you're gonna need some help. I know you got some weird skills, but you're gonna need some help getting him back. Um, no limit to, uh, to, to what we'll, to what we'll spend to get him back. Uh, so, um, see if you can hire so, a couple runners so for 5,000 new yen each. 5,000 each, all right. Yeah, I, 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 I was gonna, I was gonna ask you for a ballpark that was something other than no limit because I haven't hired shadow runners before. Yeah, no, it, it, it you should be able to do it. it five, five thousand, five thousand, right. five, five each. Um, and uh, well, this is I don't know if you heard the rumors. Um, talk to Violet. I think we the the, the right. rumor is should she. Rumor is that she knows people. You know, she knows. Oh, she knows. She knows those kind of people. Uh, All right. Yes, that's the that's that's the rumor, um, and uh, that'll get you started. That'll get you started. Um, I'll. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna go crash a fuel truck on the runway. I'll, I'll buy you as much time as I can. Dude, try not to be in it when it does. Yeah, okay, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> I'm going to go uh, try to find Violet. Okay. Uh, so I'll go to her her, uh, her dressing room. It's pretty easy to find, <laughs> yep. Hey, CQ, what's going on? I thought y'all left for the airport already. Uh, yeah, about that. Uh, there's a problem. Um, you know, Jander likes to, you saw what happened with him and, and the woman, right? Jander the Flanderer? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I haven't heard that one in a long time. <laughs> it's because he hadn't come visit me in a long time. Um, yeah, so apparently she picked him up, so to speak. It, it is the 2080s that does happen. Um, yeah, but by picked up, I mean took him away from the premises, and I'm going to need help finding him. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a little bit different. So I think we are likely to miss our flight unless we get some help. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, I didn't have anything else going on tonight. I'm to uh, help you locate Ander. Oh, good. Thanks. Um, I'd, I'd heard that you you knew people, uh, so we have some. Uh, the promoter sent me some money uh, that I can use to pay you, and I guess you know people. Incidentals. Yeah, absolutely. Let me uh, rouse up, and we'll go and track. The So I will send a group text out to the group to see who's available for for a little run around town. Um. Okay, you uh, you get a um a message back from Noir. Oh, not Noir. Um, it's like. like Slick, uh, that says, uh, 
you know, darling, I'd do anything for you. I'd I'd I'd, I'd love to um, to help you out. Uh, but uh, but but uh, well, I got this. I got this thing I'm taking care of, and and besides the the vans down. So I won't be able to help out tonight. Um, you get a message back from Mr. Bell's comlink saying, who are you and why do you keep messaging me? Um, Never do remember what the secret codes are. <laughs> uh, and uh, Curie, Curie, you don't get a response from. Um, and I'll leave it up to Nova to see what, uh, how she responds. Oh, I messaged back, thank God. And then I ask, where am I meeting you and when? Um, are we, where are we right now? Um, you are at a, uh, a Seattle honky tonk. Uh, so, um, uh, and Bob, you do have uh, a vehicle. Awesome. Um, actually, you've got the two of you have a driver, so we will just hand wave the uh, the yeah, any transportation. That's fair. If there's extra security involved, there's somebody driving. Yeah. Yes. Um, so. Um, so yeah, you've got uh, you've got you've got a yeah you've got a you've got a guy um, by the name of Jay. Uh, who is uh, doing your driving uh, for you? Um, a large troll. Um, so. So I will send the the, the coordinates. Amazing. I rush everyone out of the stuffer shack and I lock the doors. Hey, and hey, 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 I, get, I, get, I need the food. I need... I got... No, 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 no. We're all out of burritos. Get out of here. No, 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 no. It's for my kids. It's for my kids. Please, just no. let me... See ya. Peace. The, the only stuffer check that's not open 24 hours. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this Come back during the next shift. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. And I wave them out. Yeah. <laughs> this mental image of, you know, Nova just, you know... Pushing people out the door, we're slamming it and locking it. Uh, I like the idea of a broom, and she's just like using a broom to just back, back, back. <laughs> Out of my head, that was my same mental image. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That one. That one's gonna stick. That image is gonna stick for a while. Um, okay. Um, all right. You you've shut down the store. Um, oh my them. What was that? You go meet up with them? Okay. All right. Um, there's really nothing uh, to that. No difficulties. Um, and you, you're together. What do you guys do? CQ, this is my friend Nova. Nova, this is my old friend you and uh, okay. another friend of ours. Uh, and this is well, Jander's not here. Yeah, so Jander got kidnapped. But he's supposed uh, to be on a plane. We're supposed to be on a plane in like an hour. Cool. Uh, he was, he was, you know, he's the guitarist, so he's flirting with the lady in the audience, and she apparently picked him up and took him away. Uh, anyway, uh, Ty, our promoter, is uh, giving me some money to to pay uh, for people to help. Cool. Uh, uh, how much? Uh, so I have five uh, k for each of you. You want him back in an hour? Well, Ty, Ty is creating delays as we speak, so there's a little a little room for slip in the time. Um, okay. You get to ride around in the, the SUV that has the bulletproof. Yeah, Jay, Jay's got our ride. Um, Jay, 
gets out of the car. Um, you remember how I described Mr. Finley? Yes. Um, add, add another half a meter um, on him. You're not entirely okay. sure how he fit in the car. Uh, did you guys just build the car around this guy? <laughs> Miss Nova. Hi. He, uh, he politely gets the door for you. Cool. I get in. <laughs> oh, wait, for Violet to get in, then I'll get in. Okay. Um, and I'll give him the coordinates where the um, the last known coordinates of the comm link. Mm -hmm. Hang on, I just got to register that this is now going into a gender situation. I get time and a half. Oh, um, man, you get time and a half for him? And after after that pig farm, you yeah. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's fair. Um, and he peels out uh, uh, on his way to uh, to the coordinates. Um, it takes you um about uh, about twenty minutes uh, to get there. Uh, but it's, uh, you pull into a warehouse district. Um, if anybody, I believe Violet and, um, CQ, uh, give me, uh, give me memory rolls. Because I know what... I know area knowledge. Yeah, this is what I know. It's it's the, some specific uh, some specific knowledge about uh, that you both have. Two hits. Okay. Um. There's. There's a lot of um, music studios in this warehouse district. Um, it's cheap. It's cheap. Yeah, warehouses. <laughs> warehouses are cheap. You can. They're also easy to to change. And the fact of just how the the materials mm -hmm. connect in the 2080s and how much of it is just doesn't matter. They just have to get you know. It laid down, and then the synth does the rest. Uh, <clears throat> but um, the uh, you're pretty sure um, that, and uh, he's uh, pulling through. Well, all right. How uh, JS? How do you want me to approach the uh, the warehouse he's in? Uh, well, I don't think they're there anymore. But let's do this as cautiously as we can, I guess. Miss Nova, would you be able to do uh, some of your, who is it, stealth or get a uh, deal on it? Sorry, you broke up a little bit. You want to use my stealth? Yes. No problem. Okay. Um, the uh, you gonna walk up and try and get into the warehouse, or are you gonna try and look through the climb up and look through the windows? Through the windows, please. Okay, then give me a athletics roll. Wow, Roland wasn't kidding. 
First of threes. I mean, you know, it's geez. dice pool of 15 and 13. I don't understand. Book of the Shadowrun threes day. I know. Is there something in the settings? I mean. <laughs> you got to flip off the toggle that's always roll three. Yeah. Um, but okay, three is enough. It's a warehouse. It's a, there's plenty of stuff. Okay. Um, looking in, you, you see, um, oh, it's a, uh, You see a bunch of people um dancing. I'm gonna share what I'm seeing with the team. Okay. Um both of you go ahead and give another memory roll. Um but I mean it's it's there's just an it's basically the lighting in there is just at the level of emergency lighting. Um, you know, just just muted enough so people could see themselves around, and uh, that must be it. If you if you got a dice pool less than ten, you get two hits. If you got a dice pool over than ten, you get three hits. Um, uh, <laughs> the um, um, the two of you have heard of raves, rave basically the equivalent of raves like this. Where it's basically all, uh, all virtual reality. Um, they're there physically, and they're taking part in it. But there's no loud. The music and everything is directly. Um, so they're all like hot simmed. They're all yeah. They're all hot like like. Uh, or, yeah. or I guess cold sim might be appropriate. But yeah, cold sim is cold sim's appropriate, uh, but. They're 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 hearing all the the audio pumped directly into their into their brains, and mm. uh, they see a much a much a more augmented place than just the droll dull drab that uh, that Nova's looking down at. Yep. Um, on the plus side, nobody seems to be paying attention to anything. They won't even know you're there. Yep. So what do you do? So I'm going to check the uh, the tag again. Is the tag active? Yes, it is. It's got a biomonitor feed from him. Okay. Uh, is the tag nearby? Um, yeah, it appears to be in that warehouse. All right. Um, so I will beam over the frequency to Nova and to Violet. Okay. So they can pull, so they can track it. This should be Jonder's tag. So we should be able to just go in and not touch anybody and just grab Jonder and get out of there. Yeah. To be that easy. I guess let's go look for a door. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. It's easy enough to find. Uh, so I'll open the door. Um, okay. Actually, well, I will, you find the door. Oh, uh, as you approach it, there is, um, there is somebody outside of it. Um, it uh, appears to be a, a gnome. Uh, and he appears to be acting in the realm of, uh, of a, you know, door guardian, I guess is the best term. Do you, how do you, how do you approach him? Do you just walk up like you belong? Yeah. 
the best way to get into places. Okay. Um. Both, right here for the rave. Yep. Um. Okay. Both of you give me. Uh, have you done anything to make yourselves not look like your own personas? Because CQ, you've got a little social awareness. Or social yeah, if he, if, he know, if he knows who CQ is, he knows who I am. Because I'm still wearing the okay, you still the Ace of Cups right now. I'm still dressed like I, I, I never got out of costume after the set. Yep. Okay. Um. All right, this guy is a little smarter than most, but. Okay, he doesn't completely go fanboy. Um, uh, oh, I didn't. And then he looks at you and looks at Nova and thinks his, he thinks for a second. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, you're, um, you're Violet, right? And of course, sir, I, I know you, I didn't. I just thought Jander was here for a for just a, a jam session because he got brought in with because that girl talked him into it. I didn't realize. Um, yeah, we're running late for it. Oh, okay. Um, I, gee, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, hear. Um, and uh, he uh, he he passes um, all three of you um, through AR some. Uh, the uh the access codes to uh to be able to take part and accept the stimuli from the uh from the rave uh no I, I, your your work is fantastic love it um then he looks at at nova and uh and he gets two successes on bald face lying saying and i, I love what you've done lately to Nova. <laughs> <laughs> I am used to this kind of attention, so I just go, uh-huh, thanks. And I walk in. Literally, his jaw drops open. Um, he, anybody who's going to be that dismissive must be famous. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, Okay, the two of you, uh, the three of you, sorry, are able to uh, uh, to walk in. Um, do you do you load the, the stimuli package, or are you just going in doing your search? I'm just going in and doing the search. Okay, then uh, go ahead and give me. Um, we'll do a joint perception. So go ahead and all three of your roll perception twice. Twice each? Twice each, yes. Four and four. Now, how'd you do that, Bob? I mean. <laughs> Three, three. Something's wrong here. <laughs> yeah, something is wrong here, and I don't believe it. Like, I don't think this is right. I think there's something broken. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, they are totally different ones for me, though. Yeah, they are. It's... Yeah, they are. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. All right, that puts the total up to... Math hard. Uh, 20. Okay, that was the threshold. Um, okay. Um, you see Jander up in a cage suspended from the ceiling. Um... Hanging down, um, he's got what looks like 
roughly guitar shaped in front of him. Um, but and he's making the motions, but I mean he could be playing, you know, guitar. Um wow, I can't even remember the name of that game. The uh guitar hero. Yep. I mean he's basically he's got like a guitar prop in front of him that he's just drumming, but it's not actually doing anything. Um this both of you spots he's he's moving his hands, but there's something wrong with the way he's he's moving his hands. They just look kind of out of control, like he's just almost doing this on autopilot. Actually, not autopilot. Um, a malfunctioning autopilot. Um, but yeah, he's up. Um, it's a warehouse, so he's. I've seen this before. Yeah. Somebody, somebody's hooked into a faulty beetle. Yep. So, uh, yeah, he's he's up there from the. Uh, Hanging from the ceiling like that, um, and uh, there's a bunch of people just, you know, uh, dancing like he is. Um, I'd like to just follow like where it's attached to and hanging from, and then like follow it to its source to see if I can get him down. Okay. Um, it doesn't appear to be that easy. It's not It's not something that's through a pulley. Um, it actually looks like it's some kind of a winch uh, that pulled him up or some kind of a, a heavy equipment lift uh, that pulled him up. It looks like a... Uh, it's a pretty thick... In fact, it's a pretty... It's a pretty thick... Able if anybody has any engineering skill. Uh, a little bit. Okay. I could say a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> no. I've got a uh, five edge and two hands that I can push buttons. <laughs> well, you got it. it. The thing is, you don't see the controller anywhere. Um, but yes, uh, CQ, that cable is like you know really thick and heavy it, it looks like it's designed to hold up a lot more than just that weight that's in there that's a heavy equipment lift the, but the heavy equipment lift itself is not here it's either the 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 winch is up the winch the cable that's got the k that pulls it up is mounted to the ceiling um you is there like a catwalk around? There is a catwalk, yes. Uh, and do I see anybody who is not raving? Um. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a first, uh, couple perception rolls for that. Um, and just for rugs and chuckles, a stealth roll. But instead of uh, agility, perception. use charisma for the stealth. And so stealth would be a plus one. Oof, wow. Uh, so four hits and five hits on perception and six hits on stealth. Okay. Um, and it's only downhill from here. Yep, Nova <laughs> and, uh, and Amber do the same. Yeah, no, I'm glad I'm getting all these rolls out of the way before. Mm -hmm. Um. Before the inevitable fight? Yes, before the inevitable fight. Um, okay. All right. Um, you do spot what? 
Uh, okay. Um, okay, see, those are, those are, those are nice and high above threes. Um, all right, so you, uh, yep, you do spot, um, your best get is, guess is they, uh, they look like gangers. I mean, fairly low, low level ones. Mm. And are they, like, are they like down, down below, or are they up in the catwalks next to like, the um, machinery? No, there's none of them up in the catwalks. Um, they're they're kind of interspersed. There are a few raised le uh, levels uh, around, and you can kind of see them interspersed. Um, they're generally together in, in groups of like you know three, and they're chatting. Um, they to the two musicians, they look like. Well, actually, you've both been in these venues uh, when a promoter tries to tries to hire non-security professionals to provide security at an event. Um, these guys look like the same guys that will let something get out of hand and then handle it using incredibly amount of overkill. Uh, but you do, you do spot them. There doesn't seem to be anybody up on the, uh, the catwalks. Um, and you see the stairs up to, uh, to get up to them. Should we go up there and see if we can activate the equipment? Yeah, I think that sounds good. All right, uh, let's all go upstairs. Okay, you guys make your way to the uh, you guys make your way to one of the stairs. Um, and let's see. That is not what I wanted to do. Uh, you, and as you're getting closer to it, you do see, um, for, for the gangers are, um, are headed your way. Uh, and they look like they're, Trying, they're trying to intercept you before you get to the wall, the staircase. So how does how does this work? Um, I, I, I'm I, I'm sort of asking Violet and Nova. Okay, okay, okay. Gotcha. I'm gonna run for it, or try and come in somewhere looking for the back. I want to run for it, and then if they chase me up it. Up the I, it's a ladder or is it a staircase? It's a staircase. And then I'm gonna donkey kick them down the stairs, and then y'all just step on top of them on your way up. What do you think? Sounds like a plan. It sounds like you were having inventory day, and <laughs> I'm here to help you blow off some steam. Thanks, Violet. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's just roll initiative. It doesn't re won't really change what's going to happen, but let's roll initiative just so we get it uh, down there. Hang on. I don't have icons, so just roll it. I'll keep track of it. I was going to ask about that. Um Wow. Okay. These guys are on the ball.
All right. Um, go ahead and give me an athletics roll, Nova. Yeah, okay. Wow. They almost glitched trying to chase Nova. <laughs> they would have spoiled all of her fun if they knocked themselves unconscious. I mean that that's I mean that's kind of a problem with I mean sort of average people. Yeah. Plus or minus a die, it's like you're not rolling that many dice and it's really easy to glitch. Yep. Uh, but you know, Nova, like normal people have a bad day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Nova, you, uh, you're able to, uh, you're able to do exactly what you planned. Uh, at oh, what, at what you're at, it's a, the staircase goes one story. We'll say there's 20 steps in it. I'm probably off on that count, but, uh, at what point do you turn around and uh, donkey kick? Near the top. I want a lot of falling happening and a lot of tumbling. <laughs> I want them to get contusions from like just hitting the steps. I assume they're metal. And uh, then just, you know, my friends trampling them. Okay, so basically you are you want to be a safety officer's nightmare. Yes. 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 And you know, if a magic can of oil just shows up at the bottom of the steps too, that's great as well. Um sorry about that. Give me one second. All right. Uh I'm it's an unarmed combat thing. There it is. That's what I need. So go ahead and roll your unarmed combat. Um, and uh, I'm going to give you an edge for Yeah. I'm going to yeah. free edge. Okay. All right, so you got, yeah. so that effectively would have cost you two edge, because you got, you got one, you got one from me and another from attribute mastery. Um, so oh. I want to reroll those fails. That sucks. Wow. Yep. Okay. All right, you got a four. Give me one. it is. Okay, I was right. Ready for me? Um, but yeah, you already... Yeah, you rolled. Okay. Oh. Oh, you're doing... Okay, what was the second roll? Oh, you know what? I just realized I did something wrong. That's stupid. Guys, you can't edge twice. Sorry. My bad. Ignore the second one. Okay. Uh, all right. Oh, but that's oh. awful. I only have four hits from pre-edging. Um, I didn't think of it. Yeah. And if you it, to be honest with you, if you wanna if you wanna re-roll, go ahead. But in when you get that many dice, it's generally best. Unless you're doing something like that's really Hail Mary, that where you need, you know, to just get all those rolls and you're just going for it, uh, it's generally best to post edge. So I would go, go ahead and read. Well, then can I take the second roll that I did with only 16 of my 20 dice and. Just roll four more. Yep, you can. Uh, 
Okay, eight hits. Okay. All right, so the first one, first one you've got five hits. Hey, I said there was four. Okay. Um, they were not expecting you to do that. And yeah, you kick them and they start tumbling down the stairs at the other two. Um, um, okay. Um, both of you give me athletics rolls to do the, to do the stomp maneuver, the running up the, you know, running on them up the, up the stairs. Three hits. Okay. All right. Um, you guys do it. I mean, they're still conscious. They've taken some, they've taken some damage and owls, and they're kind of slow to get back up because they're still trying to figure out what just happened. Um, but uh, where do you guys, uh, where do you go from here? You gonna keep going up the catwalks and just ignoring them, or are you gonna knock all of them out properly? Do you want me to stay down here and keep donkey kicking them back down the stairs while you guys go up? We may be able to find something upstairs that we can just push down the stairs. My God, no. Just. <laughs> no. This, I just, just. Tom, do you just want us to go through and punch them all? <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't have to. Actually, be, to be honest with you, the best, the, the most tactical thing would just be to go back up. But no, yeah, I just had this mental image, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna suggest it to you. By what I just was afraid you three were gonna start doing. Um, I'm Bob, all open for suggestions, Tom. But, yeah, I know, but Bob might know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the right age, should... I know Eason does. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, okay, so yeah, your best bet would be to just, just keep going. Keep keep going because I mean at this point you've attracted all their attention, so they're starting to race up the the other catwalks, uh, but it's going to take them a few minutes to get to you. Um, man, I wish we had our mage. Then she could just blast the stairs off, or our friend Slick who could get them all into the dancing thing. Uh okay. I'll, um, take right I'll keep up I'll take up the rear. Okay. Okay. Um you three um as you're running up the stairs, um you for some reason you're because you're kind of working your way up the, the different catwalks, you realize he's not getting any closer, and at that point you realize somebody's somebody's pulling him up. Um, so, uh, what happens next, uh, we'll get back to, uh, we're going to take a five minute break, uh, just to give everybody a chance to move around a little bit. Uh, and, uh, as soon as I can find it. Oh, you know what? I probably should be better about this. Uh, this week, uh, we are giving away a Remal Turner shirt. So, if you'd like one of these uh, nice and comfortable shirts, uh, put a uh, hashtag RemPC in the chat, or you can uh, give uh, bits and subs to me. And I suppose, <laughs> I, I suppose the other characters too, um, if you'd like, uh, so that these gangers actually have a chance. Uh, just think, with just a few bits you could make a great a great difference in a sprawl ganger's uh night 
Uh, yeah, I can't believe I said that either. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll be back in a few minutes, folks. You get to play with us now, which is so exciting. So with channel points, bits, and subscribes, you can give rewards to the player of your choice. So how to do that is, no, not Bob. Channel points, I believe it is 500 points, gets you nerfs, which is plus three to any dice roll to the player of your choice. For a thousand channel points, you can do a point of edge to any player. And for 2,500 channel points, you can do four edge to the player of your choice. Now for bits, for a hundred bits, that's $1. You can do the nerfs for 200 bits, that's $2. You can do the point of edge or for five, 100 bits, that's $5. Get four edge to give to the player of your choice. And finally, again, the subs. If you subscribe, you can give four edge to any player. The earth has changed. All that once was is no more. Cities remain. Reshaped. Races. Reborn. Reality. Ready to level up your cosplay game? Check out the Geek Forge on Etsy. With a variety of props to give your photos that extra spark, you'll find just what you need. Hold magical fire in the palm of your hand, or take a potion to restore your mana. With a large variety of colors, you can choose your own magical flavor for your cosplay. Bring drama to your photo shoots with these vibrant props and more, all available at the Geek Forge. Are you ready to level up your cosplay?
Happy Thursday. We're back. Uh, they were charging up the various walkways through this um, through uh, this warehouse, that ring around the outside of this warehouse, um, with uh, Nova taking up the uh, the back. Um, when they notice that it looks like the uh, who they're trying to get to is actually getting farther away. Uh, so, but um, essentially, uh, this kind of becomes a um, a game of cat and mouse as you're running up the stairs. Um, Nova, what uh, you? Physically, you outclass these guys. You, yeah, and physically, I know outclasses these guys uh, completely. What are you doing as they try? As you know, as as some show up to challenge you to uh, to yeah. get by them. I flip them over the rail. Ooh. Okay. Um, all right. Give me a an, uh, give me an unarmed combat just to just as a an average to see what this how this goes. Yeah, you got more hits than they have dice. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, okay, luckily for that guy, um, he got uh, tossed onto the roof of a uh, of an office. Um, unluckily for that guy, while he did land on the roof of the office, the office was not meant as a load bearing roof. It was just a cover to keep crap and detritus out. Um, so he lands there and then immediately falls through. Um, at which point they don't charge up quite as pell-mell anymore. And um, you hear calls. Um, You hear calls for get Borja, get Borja. Um, in any event, give me athletics rolls as you uh, keep trying to to catch up to the uh, slowly ascending um, cage. For because while it is very strong, those things don't have a gearbox; they have one speed. They can lift up. How, yes. How yes. fast is it? Like, how high up is it from us at this point? Um, it is. Um, I would say it's probably 20 feet up. I mean, yeah, you could. Can I make the jump? Yeah, Nova can make the jump. Let me know when we hit 15. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If I run and then used the handrail as like a leap off thing to jump off from, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I could, I could stick it maybe if I rolled well. If you rolled well, yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. gonna do it. I'm gonna go for the cage. Athletics. Athletics. Um. Okay. Um, are you satisfied with that role? No, I would like to re-roll. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to do a re-roll failures? Yes. Okay. Hey, guys. Man, you know the one problem with that roll, Nova. There wasn't any twos in there. Uh, there wasn't any twos, and you only rolled uh, not, one two. Not nearly enough twos for your taste. Nope, twos were my taste. That pipe, that 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 thing could have broke. Uh, six successes though is enough. 
Um, I mean, uh, you know, was it from Power Rangers? Is it Data? No, B, the little robot guy. <laughs> and the way that he goes, I, 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 that like went through my head when I rolled that one. <laughs> Yeah, but <laughs> wow, I'm still stuck on you. Thought Data was on Power Rangers. I he's on Goonies. I for, I forgot the robot's name. God, it's like. Oh, Chad, okay. You know. meant that Data. Gotcha. Okay, that's different. Yeah. That's different. Goonies Data. Okay, on Power Rangers, that's acceptable. Red Spitter on Power Rangers, no. <laughs> um, okay, but no, you you make it. Um, I mean, you know, it's not perfect, you, but you've uh, got a grip, um, a clear grip on the, uh, the cage bars, actually in the cage uh, mesh or, you know, that's in there. And um, it, of course, your weight is enough. It starts to, it starts to, uh, uh, to swing. Um, but, uh, Alpha, yes, it's Alpha. I couldn't. Wow, did I just admit to knowing that? Okay. Uh -huh. All right, moving on. Um, uh, you see, you two see Nova do that. Um, CQ, you're taking a moment. I mean, yeah, I'm taking a moment. As, you know, as Violet this, passes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you know, this this whole. I mean, you know, if it was, if you can play the drums for twelve for twelve hours straight, but all this running around upstairs, jeez. Um, uh, you're and, much better at marching around, not yeah, running around. Yeah, you hear, but then you hear the uh, the there's a chant going out for uh, Harbor. Uh, Harbor, and uh, you see, um, at first, the two of you think Jay's not Jay didn't stay in the car, and then um, you realize from his from his paint from his face paint. And the fact that he's an, a just a very large orc, uh, it Jay did not Jay it is not Jay. Uh, it is a very big ganger who is stomping his way towards the two of you. Uh, coming up the stairs, or he's on the level we're getting to. Um, he's on the level you're getting to. He oh. went up some of the others. Um, he pulls out a, uh, what you're guessing is, um, some kind of club. Oh boy. And, uh, makes a, uh, swinging, swinging uh, can, around can, motion. So I, I flip out, um, my two not standard drumsticks. Mm-hmm. Uh, as they, they pop out of my uh, out of pockets of my coat, they are extendable batons. Okay. Um. Okay. If you want to reroll initiative. Okay. Uh, you can. Same thing with uh, you, Lily. Um. I won't make Amber do it because Amber is swinging on a. Lily? Did I say Lily? Wow. Yeah. Um, I have no idea where I came up with that name. <laughs> Actually, yes, I do. Violet, Lily. That's, that's flower. I kept it in the flower realm. Yeah. Rose, Daisy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Hibiscus. Um, I mean, I'll roll initiative if in case I want to, like, help. <laughs> okay. Um, CQ, okay. 
So he's charging up there. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, he uh, he swats both of the, the sticks, you know, hard on himself, and or actually the stick, hard across his chest, and uh, then charges you. Oh, boy. Um... Okay, four successes. Boy, uh, I am going to so on my defense test. I'm going to spend a minor action to block, mm -hmm. which gives me my close combat skill in clubs, which is nine. Okay, uh, I think it's nine. Eight. Nice. Okay. You you nicely counter. Um and you hear the place go quiet for a minute. Um uh, it's a sorry it's a hard strike, but you're skillfully send it out of your way. Um go ahead, what do you do? Uh, so I'm going to uh, sort of step in, and I'm going to uh, minor action counter strike. Mm -hmm. The adept power, uh, oh. which gives me uh, which gives me extra dice equal to my net hits on the block action, which is four. Mm -hmm. uh, plus my level in counter strike, which is two. So I get six bonus dice. Okay. Not awesome, but okay. It is what it is. Okay. Um, <laughs> he has. You have two net successes. Are you happy with that? I'm gonna have to be happy with that. Okay. Because uh, I have, I think I have one edge at this point. Okay. Um, what's your attack rating? Forgot about that. Tech rating is nine. Your tech rating is nine. Yep. That actually does give you an edge. Nice. Because he is currently shirtless. Um, so he does not have any defensive bonus other than his body. Okay. Um, now question. Are you going for the knockout? I think I have to declare that with the attack, don't I? Mm, no, I think you can... I think I looked it up. You can wait to see if it would work. Oh, okay. And it uh, would work. I, I do have the two edge for that, so... Uh, sure, I'll spend two edge, uh, hoping that four damage will do it. Uh, it does. He's, nice. a, he's a ganger, yeah. You, you block it, send yours back across his, back across his skull, and he crumples. I'm so little. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, wow, I almost did it again. Violet, um, go ahead and uh, give me a perception roll. Okay. On All right. If you're satisfied with that, we'll let that... Well, if that's it, there's there's something you're beginning to notice. Okay. Um, Amber. Uh what are you doing? Or yeah, what is what is Nova doing? So is it like how is he locked in this thing? Um, um the okay, you're on um on you're hanging right now from the back side. It looks like there's a door. On the other side, um, that opens up, and you think you see the equivalent of a pad padlock or something, or maybe maybe somebody stuck a screwdriver in it. 
Um, Can I Hulk smash through these bars and just... <sighs> through the... No. Okay. I, I, I don't... I, I don't crawl. I, crawl. You, you can... Just lock fix it. Yeah, this this is... Because it's it's not actually that. It's the, it's that ex, expanded metal. And what's your strength? Four. Yeah, I don't know. A strength of four isn't 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 enough to to rip that to rip that open. You've got to be getting up into Jay's uh, level of strength uh, fourteen to do start doing stuff like that. Okay, um, so crab crawl to the front of it. Yep. Can I shoot the lock off the cage? Um. Yeah. Okay. So you're just going to do the you know doom 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 across it. As you're hanging there, okay. Give me an athletics roll. Jeez. Oh, I think consistency. Yep. Okay. Um. Yep. You are. You actually can do it pretty fast. Um. And uh, there isn't actually a lock on it. Um. However, you do have one problem. As you come around the corner, you realize that this thing has started moving instead of just horizontally, it's now moving laterally and it's about to clang into a platform on the side. On that side that I'm on? The, yes, the, the door side. And you're pretty sure you see a couple people up top there. Can I climb on top to sit on top of the cage? Yes, you can. Okay, Hello. I'm going to do that and inspect whatever is holding this thing up. Okay. Well, basically, as you get to the top, it'll you'll hear you you will hear the clang of it of it hitting that cage, hitting that platform. Um Violet and CQ you reach the you were reaching the top close to this level and you see as as amber climbs on top you see a couple of people yanking uh janger out of uh the cage oh i shoot them okay that's fine <laughs> yeah Yep, you pop up to the top, and basically you you see it at the same time. Uh, but yeah, they're basically they the door opens up and they're grabbing him. So you're just shooting it, though. Okay. Yeah. Um. And because of my great guidance of Bob and you yourself, um, I'm going to take both of my Aries predators out, shoot him with that, and then. Uh, Jump off and try to land on top of them if I miss. Okay. <clears throat> what is. Oof. Okay. Timing wise, by the time they, they've got him out and they're pulling him and you. Shoot at two people. Um, Tom, you've got so many fours. 
Yeah, I know. I got a ton of fours. What is you? What do you have loaded in there? Do you have stick and shock, or is it uh, just regular ammo or gel rounds? It's probably regular ammo. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, it's probably that. I feel like that's the last thing I put in there. So, <laughs> okay. I think you I think you have some gel rounds, but I don't think I've ever seen you use gel rounds. Yeah, you haven't used gel rounds. Okay. Um Okay, so that would be eight damage to start out with. Okay. Um, you definitely stagger one of them. Um, your gun jams. The other one, your gun jams. The six hits. Okay. That that that, that gun is uh, is jammed, and you'll have to uh, you'll have to clear it before you can fire it again. Um, see that person. Then is then I then I jump on top of that guy. Okay. Um well their action um the person the person you shot fell down because you did well over their body uh in in damage. Uh the other thing is you see like I said, Jander's definitely moving strangely. Um, and he's got these strange goggles on his head. Um, but the person grabs him and dives with him into a chute that's in the wall. Um, you know, it's about, you know, it's a big flexible tube about this this big um you can you can choose to just dive directly after them or you can land on the person that you shot and make sure they don't get back up um can i ping the person on the floor to my teammates and then jump down the chute yeah Cool. And then I guess I'm going to, I mean, so if it's jammed, do I just eject the clip? Uh, you'll also have to, like, you know... Um, uh, it's a minor action, right? Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to be a minor action to do it, which actually technically you would have. Yeah, I, uh, I have a bonus minor action if at any turn right. when I right. eject a clip. So, yeah, you could clear it. Okay, I I clear it. Okay. Um okay, so you're diving into the tube. Right? I'll get back to you in a second then. Um you saw um Jander get thrown into the tube, and then you saw um uh the uh and then you saw her, basically the easiest thing to do would be for Nova to point to the person because she knew you were getting there. And then she did, and then Nova dove into the tube. What are you two doing? So on my way to the guy that she downed, yep. uh, I'm going to go over comms to Jay mm -hmm. and say there's a shoot probably leading to a vehicle at, and I describe where it is in the, on the building, intercept that vehicle. Okay. Got your boss. And I'm going to roll up to uh, the guy on the ground and, and finish it. Okay. Go ahead and give me a... Uh, <laughs> the, um, Let it be known, I didn't kill him. It was Bob. 
<laughs> Go ahead and roll your hit. Oh, six hits. Okay, yeah, six he's hits. yeah, he's out. Um, there's just no way. Uh, so, so for the record, these do stun damage. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. That so you ended up doing. Um, ended up doing. Seven, five points. Yep, you did five points of uh, of stun damage. Um, yep. But if, even if he's actually running two tracks, he's not in a good mood. Well, at this point, he just lies there. You know, it's like he's starting to get up. You hit him, and he's and he basically falls down. Um, out. Um, oh, wow. Okay. Is he going to okay. bleed out and die? No, he's, he's unconscious. You don't know, actually, yeah, you don't know what, yeah, you walk up, you hit him, and he's out cold. Unless one of you guys can beat an 11 on Judge Intentions. <laughs> I, I don't have that many dice. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. only have a nine. Yep. No, I, that's just an awesome roll. Um, Violet, give me another perception roll. There it is. Five hits. Okay, Violet. You recognize him. You also the guy that just passed out. The guy that just kind of got up and then collapsed, and he made this sound that triggered a memory. And uh, you you saw, and you also see. That thing that's been bugging you out of the corner of your eyes? Um, you see a, a cam. A cam drone. Floating around. Now, this guy and those that style cam drones, you've seen those before. On the Billy Berserker shoot. That guy is a stuntman. Uh, I was going to ask if there were any other musicians in cages. Um, nope, there were no other mus musicians in cages. Um, but that guy is a um, that guy is a you know, a stuntman. He made the same sound uh, when he had to play that you know Billy actually hit him and hurt him. Um, um the. Uh, so, um, so while you two are, well, while, while you're trying to figure out what you want to, where you want to take that from, um, Amber, um, Stop. give me a, uh, athletics roll for the fall down the chute. Uh, just to, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you also gained an extra edge um, from that, from because of the the particular situation. The other person is falling with somebody that was is falling with somebody else, so he's on minuses and thing. Um, this you've fallen in a spiral pattern. This isn't just a straight shot down. This is a, you know, corkscrew spiral um, downwards. 
And you see the person in front of you. Let's see if he pulls it off. Yes, he does. He kicks out at the right moment between a seam at the things, and it separates. So you're going to go in a different direction. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yes. I want to spend a hedge to make you roll, re-roll your successes. Whew. Okay, thankfully that was not that many. Um, okay. Um, that, fortunately, he used up all of his edge making your gun jam. I used up all of his edge making your gun jam. Uh, he does not, he does not send you flying out of the tube system this time. Uh, it does slow you down, though. Okay. Because it I don't breaks like to it. Roll. It's in a spiral motion, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to roll composure to see if I throw up. That that works. You were not. That's fair because also you weren't expecting it. This guy was expecting it. He knew he knew it was there. Only three. I'll vomit if I have to. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. These um, are my favorite kind of rolls because no one ever really like makes you have to do them yep. like yep. when you eat street meat you should roll for composure oh trust me if i thought of it yeah i would have had you do it and i will when the other two follow you down Bob um, is so kind yeah <laughs> um <laughs> um yeah the, the 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 you bounce hard and it hits your stomach just right and, and yeah that's just it's, but it, it's over now, and you quickly slide past it. Um, oh, no, um, the Stuffer Shack yeah, special yeah. that I had for dinner. Ah. <laughs> so you, uh, and you're sliding down past it. You hear a screeching of tires. Um. And uh, it uh, give me one last athletics roll. Okay. Um, when you come out, you are dropping directly. Um, through a vehicle sunroof or moonroof or whatever they're called, um, and into uh, and into the back seat of a familiar um, fancy SUV. Jay, is that you? Yeah, I saw I saw it shaking and figured uh, it never hurts to catch a uh, to catch a pretty lady. Um, now, if whoever's up there could just send down, you know, I got the, the pretty lady. Now send out a hundred new yen or a million new yen. Never works. Um, come on, then uh, he stomps on the gas. And takes out after the after the vehicle. I roll down the window and get ready to shoot out tires. Okay. Um, what are you two doing up there? So, are we going down that, or I mean, I say we just go back outside. 
I think that someone is trying to get some uh, free labor out of us. And huh. that does not sit well with me. Uh, and so I point out the uh, the camera drone uh, to CQ. And so we we did a little bit of extra work uh, for Mr. Berserker. And we filled our contract, but if they are trying to uh, get some, some free action footage without me signing a release form or contacting my manager, then that's a whole other set of problems for them. At that and so ha having, having, having yeah. had uh, Violet point out the, uh, the camera drone, yep. I, I point one of my batons at it and say, my agent and his lawyers are going to be in touch. He, the stuntman at this point, rolls over. Is that why she's got, is that why you're using live ammo? What is happening here? Shoot a mu music video. And then why did you kidnap somebody for a music video? I didn't. This well, isn't. Someone did. Director is always crazy. In part, you are correct about that. Realism and everything. He um, he puts up a hand, asking for and help lift help up. You got a hand up, and I'll show you the contract I got. Sir, you are easily twice my size. Well, he's actually looking at CQ. You're still <laughs> conscious. What? You're still conscious. Gosh, I forgot. You're a big star now. I, he kind of painfully leans up against the side of the wall. I, I, I point. I point to the to the bigger ganger. He's not. He's local talent. I don't care. Um, and he pops up a contract. Um, yeah, it's your. Uh, it's not. It's not your promotion agent. Trey wasn't involved in it. Um, but the, isn't signed it. But yeah, it's a. Uh, it's your. Uh, your band manager. Um, my my band manager or Violet's? Your band manager. Mine. Yes. Ah. Is there, that you, you 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 remember hearing there there was talk of doing something kind of crazy and but you didn't you, you didn't know that they planned it yet or not. He's showing it to me. I pulled down. I pulled down a uh, a copy of it in AR. Mm hmm. I shoot it to my manager and say, you want to explain this? Um. Or, or are my contacts going to double their fee? He, oh, we're definitely doubling our fee. Yeah. Oh, sorry, quadru oh, it's already doubled. Are, or are they going to quadruple their fee? Fee? What are you? What are you talking about? You're you're supposed to. Why aren't you on the plane? I mean, I know there was a problem with the with the thing. Trey and Trey and the, look at it again. Look at the paperwork yeah, again. Okay. Yeah. But okay, yeah, that's for the video shoot we're doing in a week. Somebody got the calendar wrong, and they're messing with my schedule. Wait, you're shooting it now? But you weren't... Well, the talent I've hired is definitely shooting somebody now. Oh, no, that crazy director. Not in, not in the way you expect. <sighs> Damn it, that director. Ah. That's the reason they call him Lunatic. Okay. And, and, I, and I pan over... 
Uh, oh no, the one guy uh, that got shot is down the went down the tube. Well, no, he he didn't get shot. The guy that the guy that got shot is there. Oh, is there? So yeah. I, I pan I pan the camera over okay. to show him the the shoot that went on. Okay, stop shooting people. <laughs> stop shooting people. First off, if you get second off, get out of Seattle before you get involved with Lone Star. There, where's Jander? You tell me. Okay, uh, somebody get Luna. Yeah, yeah, him, the director. Yeah, somebody get him on. Okay, okay. All right. First off, we're gonna. we I didn't do this. We, we were working out with the director. Uh, the, the paperwork says you did. Well, I yes, I hired the guy. I told the guy we would be doing it. I didn't hire him for doing it tonight. It wasn't supposed to be tonight. I'm going to send a message to Nova while while they're chatting to say that um, this was all a ridiculous setup and that it's a music video. So okay. can I okay. shoot out these tires I'm focused on right now? I say as I'm focusing well, on here, these here, tires. Here, as the bullets have left the barrel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here's, here's the difference. The, that conversation did happen, but Nova's... A, Nova's a couple minutes behind. Um, so yeah, um, you're uh, Jay is uh, let's see. Um, um, Jay is keeping pace with the vehicle ahead of you. Um, he's having a little trouble uh, making any headway. Um, but now he's in... Um, he starts getting in range of... Um, where you can start thinking about shooting with a handgun... And you see the um, the back window of the SUV blow out. Um, your professional thing is that somebody shot it with a shotgun, which you know means everybody in there is death now. But um, and uh, then they start uh, firing a shotgun at your vehicle. Uh, go ahead and roll your shot. If you're if you're leaning out to shoot the uh, thing, okay. I'll post edge that. Okay. So it'll be nine hits. Okay. Um, the tire, um, the rear tire explodes dramatically, and the uh, the vehicle in front starts um, fishtailing back and forth. Let's see what the guy does to keep it. He managed, the guy in front managed to keep it into control. But, um, but Jay uses that as a, an opportunity to uh, accelerate. You want me to come up on the driver's side or the passenger side? You shot the passenger side rear real rear tire last. I switch sides of the vehicle and go, please go to the driver's side. Okay. Um the uh they shoot the shotgun again. Um the the van is armored and bulletproof enough that it handles um actually give me a firearms roll. 
Just a just a straight fire. Actually, you know what? Uh, your firearms roll, but you add logic. Oops, I did this wrong, I think. It's okay. What's your logic at? All logic's two. Two? Okay. So we take off the last. All right. You still, that's still, you're still down to, you still a decent, a decent roll enough to be able to look at it and go. The, the shots that hit the front of the vehicle, um, they're flaring up. A lot, almost like pyrotechnics. It's like they shoot, and then when they hit the vehicle, they do this, you know, firework pop, which, you know, shots or slugs. Besides, if you're shooting at something like this out of a shotgun, um, you use a slug because you want to get through the. You want to get through the windshield and kill the driver. Uh, but you can, so that, that you get, um, but he, uh, he's pulled up alongside of the, uh, the driver's side. What are you, uh, what are you doing? Tom, today was inventory day. I'm going to shoot out the front driver's side tire. <laughs> Ooh. You don't have any driving. You have absolutely no driving skill, do you? Okay. No. Okay. Because Tom knows what's going to happen, but Nova wouldn't know what's going to happen if you shoot out that tire when you're on that side of the vehicle. But go ahead and roll. Yeah, I'm going to just do it. I don't yep. care. Yep. And then I'm going to tell Jay, hey, Jay, I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> and then I don't care what he says either. He just has to live with the consequences. <laughs> Darling, I'm on time and a half. Do what you do. I feel good about it. <laughs> um, only reason this guy's got this many dice to dodge it is because he's having trouble controlling it. But oh, oh that's a glitch. Uh, not quite a glitch. Well, he's got a tire out. You know, I'm going to give him bad luck at this point. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um, okay, Nova, you learned something today. When, when you shoot out the rear tire, the vehicle uh, sways back and forth. Um, when you shoot out a front tire, um, it, it digs in and immediately shifts in that direction yep. of the vehicle. Um, so, you shoot it, and then you see this horrified look on the driver as basically it turns and tries to, the vehicle turns and tries to ram into the door you're leaning out of. Try is a strong word. I'm strong. <laughs> <laughs> Athletics to dodge? Uh, yep, you can do that. Sure. You also get an additional four dice. Okay, you don't need it. You're fine. Um, six hits. Um, yeah, it... Um... The, uh... You feel a jarring impact... Um, and the, uh, your vehicle is shoved hard to the side as, uh, as that vehicle skids, uh, goes over on its side and, uh, and skids to a stop. Now, um, Violet, go ahead and have your conversation with Nova. Uh, but then I will send her the, the message that says that. Um, it's for a music video. <laughs> it's all fake. Don't kill them all. Yeah. Yeah. 
So don't kill them, I say, as I walk up to uh, the stopped car and I'm loading my gun. Killing them is a lot more paperwork than we got time or resources for. No, I don't want to do any paperwork. All right. Now, the vehicle's on its... The vehicle is um, uh, laying on its side. Um, does um, it have a sunroof? It does have a sunroof, yes. Yes, it does. Oh, crap. Rolled over <laughs> on its side. Give me an edge roll. <laughs> okay. Um, kind of half laying out of it as you walk up is Jander. Um, those funny sunglasses, those funny goggles are kind of knocked askew as he looks up at you. What does a trauma patch do? Uh, it'll keep him from dying. Okay, I slap one on his forehead. And then I tell him he's a pervert and an idiot. Okay, so this is this is the sequence of events that was happening. That was going to happen. Do I kill him from slapping it on his forehead? <laughs> what am I done? No, you don't. But he looked up at you and he was a you could see the beginnings of a lady killer smile, that that cocky lady killer smile, and then you slap the 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 uh the thing on his forehead and he's out. Okay, I don't think he's going to die. I pinged Violet. A music what? video? Jay walks up to you. You want me to load him in the car vehicle, Miss Nova? Yeah, I think uh, him and CQ have a flight to catch. Well, this will be much this will be much simpler. He won't be hitting on you the entire time. Um, and he picks up Jander and tosses him in the trunk or tosses him into the the back of the SUV. No, the trunk's good. Well, I mean, there's there isn't a trunk in an SUV, so he tosses him into the cargo area. Um you do see him hook a med kit up to him. Um and uh pull pull something out of his uh thing. You get a message. Um it's a um uh, Afforded feed, afforded med feed uh, from the, the med kit that gender's okay uh, from Jay. Um, you two walk out and are waiting out front? Yeah. Okay. He, uh, Jay pulls up. Um, gets out of the vehicle, gets the, well, he pulls up and it's not the passenger side because the passenger side is now in. That's it's crumpled. crumpled. It's crumpled. That, 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 uh, that door is crumpled. So he, he, he parks strangely, but gets out and opens the, uh, uh, that, that rear driver's side door. And we all have to sort of climb in through yep, there. Yep. You climb, you climb in through there. Um, Jander's with the luggage. Yeah, it's about where he belongs. <laughs> so, this is over, isn't it? This is the, the Jander incident's over. I don't know. You guys want to go loot the busted up car? <laughs> I think we need to get out of here before the pawns get here. Well, okay. I think that the Jander incident is not completed until we are returned to the agreed upon location and Jander is he, completely returned. So when when he's on when he's on the plane, it's over. So Thank you're you. you're still you're still on overtime. Thank you. Um and Jay uh Jay drives you to the airport. It's really not that uh thing. I didn't I wasn't expecting that five. Perception. I figured you'd see the signs and Violet would put it together eventually. 
but I wasn't expecting that by perception. Um, I was expecting Nova to be violent. Um, it's inventory day. <laughs> um, um, you park and uh, Jay, um, Jay gets is this, a, is this a private flight or are we having a weekend to Bernie's him? Um, no, it's a private flight. Okay. Yeah, no, you, you, uh, we really have hit it big. Yeah, no, you, yeah, you have hit it big. Uh, it, even before then, you, weekend at Bernie's him was just a little, that got a little, that got a little old quick. Yeah. Uh, so, um, pulls up, uh, I've taken the liberty of calling a, um, a an automated vehicle, yeah, an automated vehicle to uh, to pick to take the two of you wherever you'd like. Uh, uh, to uh, the Miss Nova and Miss Violet, and uh, this has been Everybody fun, sure. and I enjoyed the time and a half. I'll get the luggage, boss. Thanks. Well, uh, pleasure as always, Violet. Always an adventure, CQ. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's good to meet you, Nova, was it? Yep. And make sure they get paid. Okay. Um. And, and I threw and I throw in extra. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sorry, one second. Just realized. Uh, I sent him some stuff for Shack coupons. <laughs> um. So, uh, that is you can get on the plane and uh, fly off without uh, incident. Yeah, we were told to get out of town, so um, maybe you want to lay low for a little while? That shouldn't be a problem. Violet, we gotta get that footage destroyed of us. Oh, there's definitely gonna be a conversation about how we were filmed without our consent, and how we are either going to be properly uh, compensated, or that they're going to destroy the entire music video. Yeah, because I will sue, and I hold up my gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. My, the, the manager seemed to freak out a little bit when, when I told him that the shoot wasn't going the way he expected the shoot to go. Oh. Excellent. Um... Actually, at this point, Violet, you do get pinged from your manager. Um, did you want to be part of a music video for, uh, hang on, what's that band? Um, what was that band? And that's just because Thomas. Without tags. Yes, without tags. Um, and you and I was supposed to negotiate with uh, on behalf of someone. You were supposed to negotiate on behalf of someone else also? I believe you're a little too late. My visage has already been used in what I believe is the musical video you're referring to. Without oh. my consent or signing a paperwork, so okay. I'm going to need you to get that video pulled. Well, we could pull it, or we could back negotiate it. I have a secondary party that also did not agree to be on camera, and they are interested in not having their video shown. Okay, so you will need to edit it and compensate her. For her usage of person. this, this is your this is your manager talking to you. He's on mm -hmm. your side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's okay. <laughs> so do you want them? All right. Okay. Those are my conditions. 
you know what? I'm sure they can probably cut it so that she, so that she's not identifiable, uh, or even do a deep fake. They'll work I it don't out. Liable for any uh, fatalities <laughs> on set. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah, because uh, that would exp that would explain. It seemed kind of a strange request. Okay, I'll take care of it and get back with you. And make sure that uh, make make sure that uh, you're happy with the terms. Uh, but it, it day they're hot right now. Be some good press for you. Ah, I, I don't doubt it. All right, and um, that is it. Thank you all, and thank you. Three especially, I needed to do a knockout um, big one with some uh, mission with some explosions. Um, and uh, I was curious how long it would take before you figured out uh, that you were all actually shooting a music video. Oh, thanks for running this, Tom. <laughs> thank, you, thank you, Tom. Yep. All right. Well, uh, next week on this Emerald Glitch, we are going to be doing... We're not going to be doing Emerald Glitch. We're going to be doing um, a, uh, a brand new game called Subversion from Fragging Unicorns. It's going to be on Kickstarter in a while. or It's going to be on Kickstarter in the next couple months. Um, but you're going to get a chance to uh, see some neon Neo Babylon Cyberpunk. Uh, nice. It's based off the same... Um, realm as Fragging Unicorn's uh, miniatures game. So uh, it's, I've I play tested the system already a few, well, probably a year ago. Uh, it's been, they've been working on it for a while. <laughs> um, and it's a really interesting take and, uh, and interesting mechanics. <clears throat> so uh, hop in, give a, give a listen and you can uh, follow the Kickstarter. Um, and, uh, we don't have to pause because somebody's, we've already had the drawing, the drawing J Bruce, J Bruce, you won the Remo, uh, Rem t-shirt. Um, uh, please, uh, make sure that you're, uh, that you can be whispered to in Twitch and, uh, we will reach out to you for that info for, uh, for how to get that to you. Um, otherwise, why don't we go ahead and uh, do a, a round of introductions. Uh, um, Jen. Hi, I'm Jen. Um, I am the owner of the Geek Forge, which was the cool commercial you saw a little while ago. And uh, we make cosplay props and accessories. And we have some fun stuff coming up. We got a new um, embroidery machine. So we're going to be testing out making hats, which I'm very excited about. And um, I'm currently working on fandom inspired varsity letters to go on your jackets. So if any of that sounds cool to you, uh, come, you can join us on our Facebook group or you can join our email list where the geekforge.org. Um, is where you can find our sign up for our email list or the geekforge.etsy.com also has the link where you can get a 30% discount. Bob? Uh, I'm Bob. I'm uh, normally in the uh, in the GM hot seat uh, for Thursday nights, but uh, thanks to Tom, I was able to play tonight a, a shadow runner who's not really a shadow runner. Uh, and on Tuesday nights over on uh, uh, twitch.tv slash Master of Rem, uh, I run the Tuesday night uh, Shadowrun Missions campaign uh, for 5th edition. Uh, we are just about to finish up Season 7. That's a, that's a fun last episode. Um, mm -hmm. Amber? That, la that, that oh. last episode will be next week. Oh, okay. I'm looking forward to seeing them go through that. Yeah, I am Amber, and I play in that Tuesday night game, and I'm very excited to see what happens to us all. Um, and I just want to make a note that Geek Forge products are the best products to give for Christmas. So put your orders in. I'm Tom, or Teslon. Uh, I am the director of special projects for Rem Alternus. 
I do a lot of stuff in behind the scenes uh, for Realm Alternus, uh, putting things together and everything, including some of the credits that roll um, and the typo that I'm staring at out of the corner of my eye in tonight's credits was my fault because I was I was rushing because I just came up with this this afternoon. Uh, I do a lot of Shadowrun uh, streaming, uh, and also I'm a, uh, uh, a writer for the Shadowrun Missions, and I run things over on Shadowrun Missions Online. Um, I You can find that uh, by, uh, by searching for Shadowrun Missions Online. Uh, in Google, and uh, it's a great place to uh, get a chance to partake in a basically continuing uh, convention. You get to uh, play for a small fee, which we use to keep the keep everything flowing. Uh, but we, uh, you can play whatever missions you missed at uh, the various cons that your character didn't get. You can use this to catch them up. Or uh, you can go through the entire uh, seasons. Check it out. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, hope everybody's a great week. Thank you, three, for playing. Uh, I had a lot of fun um, GMing. I don't get to do that that often uh, for Gen Con TV. Have a good night, everybody.